Hello and welcome to Bread Theory. Uh, my name is Zach. I am your host and joining me today is Amanda, my wife. Hi. How are you doing today, Amanda? I'm well. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, so today we're just doing more of a, a, a chill stream again. Uh, nothing too serious. No, no theory stuff, really. Um, and we thought we would jump into uh, John Doyle's new video. John mm. has, <laughs> has been a MIA for... Uh, the past few months if you're not familiar with his work <laughs> you're in for a treat of sorts you were probably better off you were probably better off. watching this video yeah uh so i don't want to spoil it too much but uh he he, he he tends to talk really fast just a lot like ben shapiro although i would i would characterize his politics as even more uh authoritarian right than than ben he's he's all about that uh government when it suits his political ends and not when it doesn't basically <laughs> any sort of influence is bad unless it uh, agrees with with what he wants and he wants a very specific society so i'm gonna go ahead and pull up the video let's get into it let's no you don't need to yeah we don't need to add even more all right and let's pull it up and i'll pull it up on the big screen in just a second um, if any of you are, are new to the stream, I, I tend to do um, political audiobooks, leftist audiobooks that I, I stream every Friday around seven, and then on the weekends on Friday on excuse me Sundays. Uh, usually it's around seven, but today we're going a little bit earlier. We just thought we'd uh, you know get things out of the way a little earlier because we both have work early in the morning. Um, so and <coughs> hold on one second so yeah so that's why we're a little bit earlier than normal um, if you enjoy politics I encourage you to to follow if you haven't done that already and let me just pull up the video now and we'll get into it so here we go with uh, the brand new John Doyle he's uh, his, his channel is called heck off commie um, and his new video is called five new conservative policies to take our country back. And he calls his viewers comrades. That's Which my is favorite part. Which is bizarre, because he doesn't seem like the type to want to co-opt language um, of the left. And, no. and yet comrade is, is firmly entrenched in, in the, the tradition of, of leftist political organizing. So, yeah. Anyway. But, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to set it up that much, but let's, let's, let's take a look at what he's talking about when he wants to take his country back. And, and who Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Commie. It is good to be back. New studio mode activated, content mode activated. We're very excited about it. I hope you are as well. And we're still fine tuning everything as far as the Oof. shots and the lights and the audio goes, all that stuff. So this probably isn't the ultimate and optimal setup for the new studio, but we'll get we'll get it locked down as we go along. We'll oh, make it better. This is not even my final form, and such was the case mm -hmm. with the last studio as well. So we anticipated so this, but the problem is that very few others will take this into account. So got to get used to the new setup. Got to tweak the colors and the lights and the angles and stuff as we go along. Maybe one day we'll even unlock camera three, the forbidden angle. Who knows? But anyways, we're going to get into this list here. And I do have to say that I've enjoyed the time off because it's allowed for things to sort of uh, like ferment intellectually. And I'd estimate that I probably got about 9% smarter in the time off, so that's cool. And I'll explain my absence at the end of the video so that we can just get right into it now but just know just rest assured that there is a method to my madness the HOC network has expanded Ended to be larger than ever before. We have people everywhere. We have them in media and government and local government, and we have their attention. We are literally the heck off communist octopus. Just have our tentacles. Just want to point out real quick. I don't know if you, know, you can't really even see it. Let me move my my picture just one second. So there we go. So you can see that uh, just right off the bat, you, you can tell what kind of a, a person we're dealing with here. He has the future is female, but he's he's managed to scratch out the first two letters uh, to make it the future is male. So a very big brain boy wearing his Boogaloo Boy uh, shirt. He he just moved down to Texas, so so I can only assume that that's the the route that he's uh, taking at this point. Um. Yeah. Anything you wanna? say about his setup before he really gets into the meat of it no no, no. i'm just gonna leave that alone okay for now 
everywhere, which of course is necessary because we're trying to shift our country in the right direction. And to do that, we need to have the attention of powerful people along with, of course, making ourselves as powerful as possible. And that's going to get into the first thing that I want to talk about before we get into the list, which is institutional power, the necessity and urgency of institutional power. I'm gonna monologue about that for a bit here and then we'll get into the list of five policies that I've aggregated. We're actually, we're gonna do 10 of them at first, but it's been a while, so we're going to have to microdose John Doyle. But some of them might confuse you, some of them you might disagree with, but I will explain why. They are absolutely imperative and some of them are even uh, below the radar to where we could probably get these into the mainstream discussion and even enacted in certain states within like the next two years. But first, we must address the elephant in the room which is that Father's Day is right around the corner. Okay. And we all know that... So we're going we're gonna to skip his uh, product placement. You don't need to know anything about that stuff. He can go promote his magic bullet on his own time. But we don't, we don't got time for that. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit. All right, they collapse to the ground. The, the concoction of thoughtfulness, joy, surprise, presentation. It's literally too much for their brains to handle. So they just start short-circuiting. But with dads, it's going. like... Hmm? You're still plugging. Oh, is he still plugging? Oh, jeez, it's hard to tell. He's so seamless about it. Okay. Ellen, and, and, and seamstressing. That's not your dad. Your dad doesn't... And still maybe plugging. even still lives in one of plugging. the half... Um, for a quick, smooth draw, with thousands of oh options to choose still from, plugging. plus a selection with a lifetime yeah, guarantee. We'll if it's not a perfect fit, so have yeah, to break yeah, free from the fake conservative... Firstly, conservatism proper have to break free from the fake okay. conservatism of the last several decades. Fake conservatism. It does not make any sense Somehow to doesn't involve to the Trump. same plays that have That's literally fine. never worked for you at any point. Well, the MAGA obviously. stuff is gone. And so, yeah, I've noticed that all his MAGA stuff was gone after he made such a big stink about how the hat never comes off. The revolution's not done. Uh, you know, on and on and on. And where's the hat, John? It's, it, it seems to be gone. Completely. Like, it used to even just be on the table, and now it's, it's completely mm -hmm. out of view. So I, I guess we've moved on from the era of MAGA, finally. Uh, just unceremoniously, just pretend the past didn't happen, which is uh, one of his favorite uh, little techniques there. Oh, as we get into some of these policies, you might think to yourself, well, now, wait a minute. Well, that doesn't sound very conservative to me. And there are two things that I will say to that. Firstly, conservatism properly understood is simply that which conserves the traditional American society. That is the ends. It is not an allegiance to abstract principles or means. It is an allegiance to the ends, to actually conserving something. And in case you need a reminder, Sorry, I was trying we to have get failed to conserve anything. More. On Senate, I don't want any you to be issue in the last completely blocked years. by it, though. Is I that okay? I therefore reject any input mm -hmm. from neoconservatives who don't get it yet or who don't have the intellectual capacity to ever get it because, frankly, I understand what's happening. I understand why it's happening. I understand who's behind it because I've done the reading, and that's the difference. Lots of people can only conceptualize conservatism in terms of what they've heard on talk radio or cable television or whatever. And so given that, let me ask you this, and this is the second thing. So there's a question what uh, in the chat. What is this podcast? This is not... Actually, a podcast. It's a it's a YouTube channel called Heck Off Kami by a, a very right wing conservative. I would even call him white nationalist. He's he's pretty open about stuff, but he always likes to kind of toe that line. He's he's very good at that, like a like a Tucker Carlson. He won't come out and say exactly what his political beliefs are, but it's it's pretty clear from all the context clues that you get that uh, he's for uh, a Christian theocracy, basically, uh, where. Any sort of LGBTQIA issue is 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 swiftly stamped out, um, even potentially literally. Uh, he's he's not afraid to to say that the government should be using force. Um, what is a white nationalist? A white nationalist is is someone who believes that uh, whatever country they're in should be run by white people. Um, I mean that that that's basically it they want a, a white ethno state and he wants that in i mean you know even even if he didn't want to necessarily kick out anyone who is not white he definitely wants all the white people to be the ones with all the power all the ones in control um a nationalist what what sort of nationalist would you be then just curious maybe a, a lag because because nationalism means different things in different countries um, especially if you are from an, uh, an oppressed group, nationalism can be something that, that is a kind of a rallying point to, to fight against oppression. Oh, you love your country? Well, I mean, I don't know that nationalist is, is maybe the best term for that. I mean, again, it depends on where you, where you live, where you're from. Um, 
plenty of people can love their country uh, without being an ethno-nationalist. <laughs> I mean, once you get to the point where you're saying that one ethnicity or one race needs to be in control of everything, or that people need to find their own countries if they don't fit a certain profile, uh, then I think that, that that's definitely over the line for me. Would you, would you say the same for yourself? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Hope that clears it up. Ethno-nationalist sounds even better. Oh, no. Is, is the <laughs> Are you just slow rolling into your, your troll uh, bait here? Is that what's going on? Sounds even better? Doesn't sound better to me, bud. Uh, I like diversity. I like diversity of ideas. I like diversity of experience. Uh, I don't have the right term. What's the term that I should use then? Cool. Well, we're going to continue on in the video. And if you can uh, think of that, we'll move on. Why do you think that you were allowed to hear that? And I'm not saying that these people are necessarily bad people or that they sold out or something, but why would the system allow for anything that would pose a challenge to it to be broadcast in mass? Notice how they only started censoring people once there was a legitimate effort to push back against the system, once we had a candidate who was actually a threat to the... Notice that he's claiming that they're being censored well on his YouTube channel of, let's see, 38,000 people that he talks to. And well, there's plenty of, of conservatives still. I, I think Ben Shapiro and uh, Dan Bongino are the number one and number two um, most talked about, most clicked on people of, in all of Facebook still at this point, both very conservative, both very right wing. But yes, somehow they're being censored just because a few of them got kicked off for violating uh, terms of service, which they all supposedly agreed to. Well, there's more messages coming through. Great, let's see. Love your country, believe in your country is better than other countries sacrifice for your country um cool i guess like i don't believe that that any one country is inherently better than any other country i i think there's there's definitely good and bad wherever you go so just blindly supporting your country no matter what it does that doesn't seem like a good recipe to me that sounds like you're gonna blind yourself to potentially some pretty terrible things because uh the more powerful your country is the more likely it is that, that someone acting within your country, on your country's behalf, is going to do something pretty terrible. Um, you can look at the history of the U.S. for that. The slaughter of Native Americans, slavery, on and on and on. We have some, some pretty bad marks against us and continue to do so with, with our, our foreign policy, um, as well as trade policy, too. So yeah, not about that. Uh, I'm not a communist. I'm an anarcho-communist. I guess that, that, that pretty well describes me. Uh, so I believe in egalitarianism. I believe in freedom and democracy for all people, uh, especially in places where they don't have power necessarily right now, such as the workplace. I believe in a democratic rather than a, a top-down uh, autocratic system for economics. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, yeah. He's just going to keep, or this person's just going to keep commenting, so... I know that you guys read a lot and watch a lot of videos, so I bet you know how to debunk the following argument. Why does communism fail every time? I'm not, I'm not going to get into that, because that's, that's, that's not what we're talking about right now. If you have anything to say about John Doyle or that sort of thing, that's kind of the topic at hand. You know, I know we're being pretty loose, but um, if you got any thoughts on that... I'd love to hear him, but otherwise you're just kind of derailing stuff. So we're going to continue. The establishment in this country to the swamp, to the deep state. And so to all the well-meaning patriots out there, all the good people out there who just want us to return to a libertarian society, just like the founding fathers wanted, I understand that and I sympathize with that, but we need to understand that it is literally the same thought process as, well, that wasn't true communism, well, this time we'll get it right. And it's like, well, that wasn't true small government conservatism, this time we'll get it right. Because the reality of the situation is that right now, we're not suffering from the consequences of inauthentic conservatism, but rather we are suffering from the consequences of what we regard to be actual conservatism, which exists to distract and drain time and money from well-meaning patriots who actually care about this country. These people do not play to win, they play for lobbying contracts. Virtually everything that they do is performative, it is not real. Conservatism has existed in this country as basically a form of controlled opposition, which seeks to criticize, mock, and most irresponsibly and dangerously occupy crucial volume and resources without actually doing anything to push back against the left. It is all performative.
Take the recent issue. Transgender girls competing in women's sports. Biological men competing in women's sports. It's ridiculous. The left have absolutely lost their minds, folks. How can men compete? The left have lost their minds, and yet it's the conservatives who are being so shrill about an issue that's not really even an issue. I mean, it, it's not as though these, these uh, transgender girls are breaking all the, the boys' old records and winning all the, uh, you know, state and, and national trophies and stuff like that at the high school level. It's, it's not really even an issue. It's, you know, surprisingly enough, if you start on, on hormone replacement therapy, it tends to diminish any sort of a gain you might otherwise have by just having your, your natural hormones. And uh, if, you, if you were to go ahead and ban transgender girls from competing with cis girls, then you'd be left with uh, transgender boys competing with cis girls. It, it has to be one or the other, right? Because in, in John Doyle's estimation, transgender boys would really be girls. And so they would what have to... What do you to... mean? Trans... I think you said the same thing twice. About trans... No, I said trans... So he doesn't want transgender girls to compete with cis girls. Right. Okay. Because so if they you don't... may be stronger or faster or whatever. In, in his theoretical universe, yeah. Right. Uh, but if, if you don't have that, then you have transgender boys so so what he would consider biologically female competing with cisgender girls so it's going to be one or the other mm -hmm. and so you the only way you would get around all of that would be to ban any sort of trans athlete at all but because there's no discernible difference in the, the outcomes of of these sports or statistical data indicating that they are in fact faster stronger yeah yeah, there's, there's, no, there's none of that. So um, it's, it's a non-issue to start with. So there, it's, it's really conservatives who have whipped up all this, this animosity and hatred. And, oh, moral outrage. It's basically just because things are different than they're used to. And that's at the essence of, of a lot of conservatism is just knee-jerk, not wanting things to change because you think things are good. And they may be good for you personally. Doesn't mean they're good for everybody, you know? I mean, I guess when I think about this particular issue... Uh, nope, you're wrong about that. Um, So-called biological men that took replacement hormones are stronger than cisgender females. Okay. No, that's, that's, that's not borne out in the statistics. They're not crushing every record. They're not getting to the, the top of every team. So you're just wrong about that. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. I don't, I'm not going to send you my sources because I'm in the middle of watching a video. But you can you can look it up. You find me uh, all these these claims of, of you know um, transgender girls out competing cis girls in in any measurable statistical way. That'd be great. Anyway, let's continue on with John. Compete in women's sports. It's not fair to all of our female athletes. Does that ring a bell? We're familiar with the talking points. Let me ask you a question now. How exactly is your day-to-day -day affected by the collapse of the institution of women's athletics? And, he, and here it is. His issue is not any sort of unfairness to girls. He doesn't care at all about women's sports or, or girls' sports at all. So he doesn't care if there's an imbalance. He doesn't care if, if anything like that. He just he wants a, a patriarchal society, basically. I was just thinking back to uh, formerly Bruce Jenner won all those awards for track. Now that Bruce is Caitlyn, mm -hmm. does that mean all of those awards go away? I wouldn't think so. Like they... But you know what? I'm, by this measure, by his measure, does that mean that that is... I think he just doesn't really care one way or another. He thinks it's, it's just a silly issue. Oh, here we go. Why would I find you any claims? Because you're making the claims. Um, trans girls are not competing in any women's sports anymore. That's not true. That's not true. There, there may have been some states who have made uh, laws about that, but that's not true across the country. So... 
No, I, look, I'm in the middle of a stream right now. I'm not going to spend the time to send you my sources. It's, it's, it's easy to look up, and you can do it yourself. This is not to say that biological men should be allowed to compete in women's sports, and actually, don't even call them biological men. That's just ceding more ground to the left rhetorically. Why would we need to use biologically as a modifier on the word man? Because the science confirms that. That, that if you look at, 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 for instance, brain scans of a trans person, they, they tend to more closely model the, the patterns uh, and brain, brainwave activity of what they think they are. What they, they believe themselves to be on the inside. So there's nothing in science that, that refutes the existence of trans people. So that's, that's why you use those terms. Just say men, but yeah. This is not to say that men should be allowed to compete in women's sports. This is simply to say that the whole issue is totally performative. I quite frankly cannot think of a less important, less consequential noun on American soil than women's sports. Oh, well, but young girls won't get as many trophies now because they have to compete against transgender girls. Hell yeah, that's male excellence right there. Let's go, boys. But seriously, no, I understand the problem. See, he's just a dick. <laughs> he, he likes seeing girls it's failing. Like he was just complaining about women's sports, sports because there might be men. And then now, well, yeah, go guys. Yeah, well, he's saying that that's the, how the conservative line has been that, that uh, trans girls should not compete with cis girls because of perceived advantages. But he's saying... Uh, it doesn't really matter, and if they, they out-compete them, that's great, because that's just more guys uh, owning and dunking on girls. So, he's just being a dick about it. Which is ridiculous, because, like, there is statistical evidence to show that men and women oh. perform differently in different sports and categories. That's why the measures are different in different sports and categories but he doesn't, he, yeah I think he just doesn't care about that he just thinks it's funny to dunk on women basically Such, it's so amazing that uh, he himself has not found a, a partner well, you don't know that he doesn't have a special friend I mean he's the kind of guy who would probably brag about it quite a lot because you know he's always going on about uh, trad wife this and, and traditional marriage that and all this th sort of right. thing so if he was actually himself in the process of working towards it, in any capacity, I'm sure mm -hmm. his we fans would be the first to know about it. So. Well, maybe he's secretive. Dude, you, you just keep going off on all these tangents, and I don't really understand where you're going with it. I can want to defend trans people without, having, without being trans myself. I'm, I'm a, a cis man. Um, I can care about other people without having experienced any sort of trauma myself. That's, that's not a requirement. So I don't know where you're going with that, but no. Did, I mean, did you? Is that somehow relevant to this discussion? I don't think so. So I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm getting kind of tired of this and like talk about what we're talking about at least. You don't, you don't have to believe the, the things that I bring up or whatever. That's fine. This is not and we're not doing a live debate. Um, we but can like, have a discussion at least try, Yeah, at least try to topic. stay on, on topic, at least. Problem, I understand the concerns, I understand the importance of athletics and competition, I do. But my problem is that the discussion in itself is not a serious discussion. The issue of boys with... Hold on one second, just gotta take care of that one. Let's see... See, see, now you're talking about how the Earth is flat? What does that have to do with anything? What, what does my logic have to do with the, the Earth being flat? The science confirms that trans people exist. The science confirms that the Earth is round. What's, what's your point? <laughs> you're, just, you're just wasting time now. So, cool. If you want to keep watching, that's fine. But 
gender identity disorder competing in women's sports is about 10 years downstream of the actual problem, which is that we as a Pause. country are entertaining Pause. the He's also trying to claim that transgender people are the same. It's the same as someone with gender identity disorder. Oh, those, those two things are not the same. No, they don't always go hand in hand. No. Gender dysphoria can be a symptom of, of being a trans person if, if the body that you see doesn't fit the, um, who you are, your identity, mm -hmm. then yeah, that can cause dysphoria. But that, that's, you know, one is not caused, uh, it, it, the dysphoria doesn't cause the transness. The, the, mm -hmm. Being trans can, it doesn't always. There's, there are trans people who are okay with their body. Right, uh, they especially are not like, mutually exclusive. Right, and especially like trans non-binary people. They may be perfectly fine with the body they're in, they just don't feel as though they fit into any one gender. Mm -hmm. Or they may be gender fluid. They may they change at different times. So sometimes their body may feel more right. Sometimes it may feel less right. So there's a whole continuum of, of, of how that can present itself. This is, it's interesting to me how upset he gets about these things. It's like this literally pertains absolute zero to you. Oh, yeah. It, it affects his and life it, not at all. Like what somebody else wants to do with their body has nothing to do with me. Unless they are going to hurt me. Right. So... Yeah, I don't, I don't see where the harm to other people is, is coming in with just trans people existing. Mm -hmm. can, can I be changed? Can I be changed to what? You gotta elaborate, bud. Idea that gender, sex, biology, hormones, it's all unimportant, it's all insignificant. And so what I'll say is this. Yes, I believe that men should be prohibited from participating in women's sports, absolutely. But I also believe that propagating gender theory and its adjacent strains should be prohibited in any institution receiving public dollars. Because if you don't do that, then you're just going to end up right back there anyways. As it would turn out, there's... So here we go. Here, here's his uh, authoritarian hand coming out. He doesn't, he doesn't care about using the government for his own purposes. He doesn't even give a reason why that should happen other than it's politically, in his estimation, disadvantageous to have the existence of trans people. So the government should be used as a tool to... Uh, completely erase their identities entirely mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah oh, oh it's still that one stuff. sorry i thought there was another uh oh yeah can you be changed no i have no idea what, what you're talking about um so yeah i mean mm -hmm. it's it's hard to conceive of, of who this this sort of message is aimed at like like who is out right. there un, you know pretty uncritically just taking this stuff in like if you mm -hmm. think twice about any two statements that he makes you can see that the contradictions pretty pretty clearly mm -hmm. um and yet he has you know a few tens of thousands of followers almost forty thousand. um so it's apparently appealing to someone but it'd be interesting to know who that is oh <laughs> here we go I talk to a communist with uh, primitive beliefs that we don't need money or technology or taxes, and it was so fun. He had an opinion. He had an arg He had arguments, and it was an honest person. I'm not being dishonest with anything I say. I'm being upfront with with things I believe. Um, all I'm doing is I'm not going to do the work for you. Like I'm not going to go ahead and stop what I'm doing, stop my entire stream just so that I can give you statistics as, as though we're in a debate. Like, we're not in a debate. I, I don't know what to tell you. We're just having a discussion here. If you disagree, I mean, that's, that's kind of the end of that particular issue for now. Like, we're not debating. We're, we're just talking. We're just looking at this video and critiquing it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the end of it, really. There's no such thing as, well, we just want to be free to do what we want in the privacy of our own home. That was a lie. The slippery slope exists. And if you think that you can deal with something down the mountain without shutting off the water at the top of the mountain, then you are not a serious person. You're so here we go again. He's even doing things in the privacy of your own, own home is, is, it should be off limits. It's strictly re re regulated to, to John Doyle. He doesn't even want that because he thinks it's a slippery slope to all these these other ideas that he's also threatened by. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's strange how obsessed he is with what people do in their bedrooms or how people choose to live their lives in ways that don't affect him. Mm -hmm. You know, if he wants to have a bunch of kids, if he wants to have that traditional life, 
and and he finds a partner that agrees to that that's fine the funny thing is how much he pushes this traditional life but he doesn't have it himself oh, how does he know if he would even actually like it once he got it I don't know I, I, I really don't know um, maybe just because he's young and, and inexperienced and, and hasn't really been exposed to that many ideas outside his own maybe I, 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 I don't know but yeah he, like, like he, he promotes this, this trad wife thing he doesn't have a wife he promotes having a bunch of kids to uh, well basically to preserve the white race he, he will never say those words exactly but that's what's strongly hinted at Mm-hmm. Uh, especially when he gets to the part later on when he's talking about integra- immigration coming and, mm-hmm. and overrunning America. Um, <laughs> we'll get to that later, but yeah, he doesn't, he's, he's not married, he doesn't have kids. I'm, I'm sure all the money that he's been given to get this channel going has come from his parents because as, as far as I know, the only actual job he's ever worked is at Subway mm-hmm. um, beyond being a YouTuber and... It's just, it just strange that all of a sudden he has a whole bunch of money to, to move across country oh, I wonder and start much, this new life. So How much he makes doing this? I mean, with 38,000 subscribers, I can't imagine it's that much. Because I know, uh, like, like for instance, Hannah Reloaded, you, you know mm-hmm. that channel. Um, she has about the same number of subscribers. But she makes her money on Twitch. And as far as I know, John Doyle is not on Twitch. Like, she makes, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, I want to say in the realm of, like, hundreds of dollars a month on, on YouTube stuff. Um, especially since she has multiple channels. But when it, when it comes to actually making her living, it, it, it all comes down to Twitch. And, I mean, she's streaming three to, to I don't know, probably six hours a day. And, uh, you, you know, you watch the stream, there's, there's donos coming in continuously. So that's right. a good question. How is he even making his money just having a YouTube channel? He's got a couple of sponsors. That, that probably helps him a little bit. But that's, you know, maybe another couple hundred a month. Mm-hmm. Um, strange. Yeah. We're not having a serious discussion. And this is the fundamental problem with the practical application of libertarianism. The problem isn't necessarily the ideas, but rather that our current context does not allow for those ideas. Libertarianism, the society the founding fathers wanted, however you'd like to describe it, it is not possible unless the society is a unified moral and religious people. James Madison, the father of the Constitution, said this. If you are going to opt to live and let live, to not seize power, to maintain the power vacuum, then the other people have to agree to do this as well. But the reality of our situation is that the people in our country now, the communists, they don't want to leave that power on the table. They want to take it for themselves and use it against you. This is not debatable. They openly admit this. And so the... Against who? Who is he even talking to? Mm-hmm. Who, who are the, these, these so-called communists? Like, where are they even in office? There's not a single person in, in all of... Uh, the federal level that that is an open any sort of leftist not 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 a true socialist not a communist not an anarchist none of this stuff none mm-hmm. of their policies would, would be followed by by any of those traditions either so so who is coming to do all this stuff and and against who mm-hmm. and, and and you know that's that's how he that's how he keeps his channel going he never quite says who he just strongly hints at it problem with this small government conservatism that we've all been sold, aka the don't do anything because then you're just like the enemy who is winning, by the way, conservatism. The problem isn't that it's a bad idea on paper, just that it's only possible if those forces who seek to destroy that society are, are suppressed. Because if you allow that fire to sustain itself, it will spread, and before you know it, it'll be too late to stop it. The founding fathers knew this. It's just all, this all this very vague gesturing about Armageddon coming for this nation now it's all going to be destroyed all the founding fathers knew all this stuff what the hell is he talking about i mean i don't know do you no 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 it's 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 just meant to to make people who haven't been following that closely afraid and i guess keep on following him i feel like that's a common tactic on that side though absolutely yeah get get everyone afraid about some vague threats that that you never really quantify or or you know, show any real evidence that they are threats at all, and, and then just get people scared to keep on coming to you as the, as the voice of reason. It's like not using that positive tactic that works so much better. 
Right. Yeah. Not saying. I mean, not once will he talk about, you know, his positive vision of society, really, other than. Nor does he like put everything out on the table right away and mm-hmm. say, "I want this, 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 and this, and mm-hmm. this is why I think these things are good." Yeah. And this is how we can get them. Yeah. It's 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 all in in his. It's like the left is oppressive. The left is taking us down. Ah. Yeah, basically, and and his vision of building is is through subtracting his enemies, basically, mm-hmm. you know, just taking them out of society, whether literally, or or just weakening their power to the point where they they got nothing. <laughs> Gobinists, uh, cool. You can love America. I love a lot of things about America. I definitely am, am choosing to remain in America because I, I want it to be a better country. So so cool. Let's let's make America better. You know. Mm-hmm. How about that? We knew this before the neoconservatives co-opted the American right and made it into an impotent embarrassment. General Patton, General MacArthur, all of the greatest Americans that you and I could think of, they all knew this. You want to talk about sources, where, where his sources for any of these great men of history believing any of that crap. But like, I, and it's hard to even know what, what crap he's, he's pretending to believe in because he's just vaguely gesturing at it. I hate people who reside in America, but spit on America. I think we should get rid of them. No idea what those statements mean. <laughs> um... So yeah, he, 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 you know, where, where's, where's all of your, your disdain for John Doyle here, who's in parts, um, he's not citing a single thing. He, he's not brought up a single piece of research, and yet you've not had anything to say about uh, how he's wrong, or he's acting in bad faith, or, or he can't cite a single source. So, kind of strange that you're trying to hold me to that standard, but okay. Oh boy. Dixie Balzer. Well, you're just going to go away, Dixie Balzer. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Here's the fun part. So I get to take your name and just get rid of you. <laughs> Count created May 31st. Big surprise there. And you followed me on him. Well, that's that's good. I hope you learned something here. That uh, <laughs> maybe we can. I hate that tagline so much. Which one? I hope you learned something. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, I'm trying to get back to. Get rid of it. Oh, cool. Moving right along. Let's get back to it. And so I would make the argument that it is time for the libertarian types to join forces with us to follow the logical conclusion of the NAP of the Gadsden flag to understand that what they're doing to this country is an act of aggression that will destroy it if you don't. What are they doing to the country? Acknowledging trans people? That's an act of aggression on what? What are they doing? <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. What do you think? I think it's funny how we live in a capitalistic world and everybody's so upset about trans people, but they probably spend the most on medical expenses for all the things that they need to live their life, their best life. I haven't heard that one before, but that's true. 
like between therapy, which we all know is expensive, mm-hmm. and then the medical procedures themselves, and then probably having to pay more out of pocket because these things are not covered oh, under yeah. most standard oh, insurance it's, plans. It's all considered elective surgeries. That's right. Right. So. Yeah. But and it's, I mean, it's the principle of the thing. We can't have things that I don't understand personally. But it doesn't impact you because they're not changing not. your sex. No. Somebody else is changing theirs. Yeah, has nothing much. to do with you. You can disagree with it. That's completely fine. But you don't have the right to, like, take that away from them. Yeah, to, like, dictate their entire life. Right. And, and how they need to be in the world. Mm-hmm. It makes no sense to me. I don't know why they make such a big deal about it and why they're so threatened by... Well, and I always run of the mill changes like it's it's not mm-hmm. that it's not even that different. You, you you call someone by a different name, um, that that happens when someone gets married. A lot of the times, someone will change their last name. If you insisted on keeping on calling them by their their unmarried name, you'd be kind of a dick. <laughs> or someone just changed but, their their first name without without changing the the the, the, the so called gender of what the name was. But the if baby you kept you calling should... them that ask people be because like i didn't change my last name when i got mm-hmm. married sure yeah there's i mean there's nothing wrong with, with and, people making mistakes just like you know assuming that you know someone who gets married is is going to change their their last name and just assuming they have the new last name mm-hmm. but at the same time you shouldn't make a big stink or a big fuss about it if they say oh actually actually i, I changed it this I is did, my last name yeah. now yeah yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. or, or oh. i didn't change it or whatever whatever or they, hyphened they, but i'm gonna go by sure. the new one like, Whatever. That's easy enough to understand. I don't know why it's so hard for people to just call people by what they, they feel comfortable with. I mean, that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Mm-hmm. You don't do anything about it, and that they are treading on you, and it is time to fight back. It is time to bite them. We have to gain... See, that's where he comes up to the line. That's where he comes up to the line. It is time to bite them. Obviously, we know what happens when a snake, uh, assumingly uh, this is a rattlesnake, um, bites somebody. That person has a good chance of dying. So what he is literally saying is, it's time for us to kill the people that, that we consider to be our cultural enemies. But he's, he's, he's again, there's, there's that plausible di- deniability. Cause, oh, no, no, I really just meant it's time to fight back. This is just a metaphor. Mm-hmm. I don't really want that. But you really have to be that. careful about what you say. Like, well, I mean, if you're, I if mean, you're a fascist, you don't. I mean, you're probably, right, you're, you're probably like, if someone interprets it the wrong way and kills someone, well, that's a bonus at, at the very least. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, there's one less of my, you know, so-called enemies to, to worry about. And the thing that makes me extra frustrated, especially as a cis woman, mm-hmm. the bathroom conversation. Mm-hmm. Well, don't you feel unsafe in the bathroom? No. Mm-hmm. My biggest problem is... Did you flush? Did you clean up after yourself? Yeah. Did you wash your hands when sure. you left the bathroom? I don't care. Sure. Like, and, and they will always bring it back to, well, the bathrooms are so unsafe and it's a place where, where you know, molestation and, and rape can happen. If that's the case, why are we not making bathrooms safer? Why is that not, not the essential issue? the problem. Like, right. The I'm, problem is people are doing things that they think are weird. Right. Because oh, I, I remember, to, like, way back in the day, in the single days, if someone was coming up to me and I was uncomfortable but couldn't quite get away yet because I hadn't paid my tab or whatever, mm-hmm. I would go hide in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's... Until I could get my check, could grab a waitress, or leave. Right. It's, it's one of the few places where you have a door that you can close that no one can get into. Or shouldn't be going into. Or shouldn't be going into. Right. Right. So, but again, if, if there are unsafe bathrooms, that should really be the central issue, right? Right. I mean, shouldn't they be, shouldn't they be safer for everyone, not just the, the girls that you imagine are, are being assaulted in there? Right. Or they could just all be single occupancy. I mean, that would be my solution. Just make everything single occupancy. There's, there's, people have no problems when they go to a sporting event or, or some sort of festival where there's the, the porta potties out there. Those are Those all, uh, you know. These are the men's Right, and they're genderless the bathrooms. They, any, anyone right. can go into any one of them. Um, you lock the door. All the parts you, you have all the, all the all the privacy. All the you got. You know, oftentimes there's a sink or at least hand sanitizer in there. 
-hmm. Nothing saying we couldn't do the same sort of thing for regular public restrooms where they're all just single occupancy stalls. Each one has a little sink and a, and a mirror and um, the toilet and, and, and all mm -hmm. locked from the inside. No more, no more problems with, with people going into the wrong bathrooms or, or being assaulted, which doesn't really happen. Right. But, but still, there, there couldn't be any more fear about that sort of thing either. And, and, you know, people should feel safe even if they have irrational fears. I think mm -hmm. that's okay. So let's make it, sa let's make it feel safer for everybody. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm fine with that, mm -hmm. but that never comes up. It's, it's, it's always, we can't, we just can't, we have to toe the line. We can't have anything change. We can't have anyone doing anything that makes them feel comfortable or valid or, or anything like that. As long as it, it, as long as I can build these monsters in my mind mm -hmm. that, that, that will then attack me. So. Right. Shall we? Let's. Let us show. In institutional power, we have to wield it. But the response is always, well, but if we use the government, won't they just use it back? Understand, it is already being used against you. How? How? I mean, how is the government being used to attack any part of this man's identity? Are they banning Christianity? Are, are, are they saying people can't have a... a uh, heteronormative uh, cisgendered marriage are they saying people can't have kids or adopt it looks like they're giving rights to other people that they see as subhuman and that's the issue it's, it, it's not that they're actually attacking him or any part of his identity they're just being more inclusive of, of other people's guessed. identities How and somehow that's an attack on him I, like I used to hear this argument all the time when, when same-sex marriage was being debated, that, that somehow if the gays are allowed to be married, that would affect me in some way as, as a non-gay person. And mm -hmm. guess what? We, we still got married. You know, it, it, didn't, it didn't cheapen it at all. In fact, I felt a little better about it, knowing that, that other people could be as happy Does as me. anyone who felt the way that we felt about another person? Yeah. Yeah. You know what else, too? Since y'all love capitalism so much, mm -hmm. allowing gay marriage made the economy boom. It's, an, it's another example of, of being more... Because where, it's more where weddings. Going woke didn't actually mean going broke. It meant the opposite. Right. So as, as you were saying? Yeah, just like they're paying for weddings and divorces mm -hmm. and all of it. Like, come on. Yeah. Having all the, all, all the same stuff, spending all the same money. So, yeah. But, but, but always uh, conservative feelings will, will trump any sort of, of, you know, economic concerns. Let's see. We have some more stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Granny and me says, did you hear in India that if you're not vaccinated, they may make you wear a skull and crossbone sign around your neck. Okay. We're not really talking about vaccines right now. Um, I haven't heard about that. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll have to look into that at some point. Um, thanks, thanks for bringing it up, I guess. Do you want to continue, continue or do you have more? Okay. Oh, I'm Corporations good. Corporations are being used against you. That means worst case scenario, even according to you, you better believe it. You and again, corporations are not being used against straight also white people. They, 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 from the mouth of someone who loves corporations. Tesla, Smith & Wesson. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do we got on there? Oh, the military. Uh, military. How many trillion dollars is that? Plenty of corporations involved in that work. I mean, I'm sure all those things on the desk. All of his sponsors desk. Are, are themselves, I'm sure, yeah. corporations. Um, what, what, he's, what, I think, what do you think he's vaguely gesturing at is this idea of rainbow capitalism, how... Yeah. In the past few years, the, the, these companies have, like, turned their logo rainbow colored. Or, or tried to be equitable and did equity training. Oh, how yes, dare yes, they? Yes, how dare they do a training that, that no one's really going to pay attention to anyway and, and fall asleep through um, and, and not really change anything. Of no. Another note on that, it's, it's very much a neoliberal uh, sensibility to think we can solve these problems just by... Uh, doing trainings of sensitivity and and um, you know 
education. All these things are not are not solved by education. There's there's at the core of everything there's a, a systemic imbalance that, mm-hmm. that's not just going to be solved by 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 people knowing better. It's not but, as though the system would work if everyone just knew their place and the right people were in the in the right places. But at the same time, starting to talk about it starts it's to... It's not a bad thing, but, but It's yeah. not a bad thing, but it gets things rolling sure. and it gets people thinking more. Right. And hopefully then that in turn comes to push actual change. Right. Because you're not going to get anywhere without talking. So, so, so like many of the, the, the democratic, like neoliberal... Or I'm just saying, Democratic parties, neoliberal policies. You can you can make this big stand. You can you can show everyone they're all holding hands. They're 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 doing their their education stuff. But at the end of the day, it's it's not nearly enough to to make the change because the change is systemic. People are made unequal on on systemic levels. I mean, just with the nature of capitalism, things uh, at, at virtually every private corporation tend to be pyramidal shaped. That, that's systemic inequality. That means only a few people, no matter how qualified your entire staff is, only a few people get to sit on the board. Only a few people get to be the CEO or the CFO or the, mm-hmm. these, these other high-ranking positions. Right. Um, and those people get to make all the decisions about everyone else below. And you have to go along with it, even though you're in the yeah. majority. Yeah, your only choice really is to, to try and get a different master or to be a master yourself, if, if you even have the resources for that. Um, but there's, you know... In, in, in the, the, the classic capitalist system, there, there is no breaking of that pyramidal shape. It, mm-hmm. it just is what it is. So what we need is to move beyond that to a more egalitarian system where every worker is also an owner and every worker has a vote in the, the key things like compensation, like what kind of work they're doing, like uh, um, hours and working conditions and uh, maternity leave and paternity leave, all, the, all these, these, these sorts of things. Um, so giving people more freedom and more agency in their lives and and when you spend eight or more hours a day uh, I personally work 10 hour shifts I I work that four days a week but uh, the standard being eight hours of your day like most of your waking life um, at this one thing doing this one job Mm -hmm. why not give people more freedom in that, that facet of their life why not give them more agency, more ability to control their own destiny? Then we'll start to actually address the root causes of, of these uh, systems of inequality. So, to me, that's step one. Mm. Okay. You've done the math. We're just going to be back to square one. And so, given that, and given that I'd actually like to be able to raise a family here someday. Who, whom is, is preventing John from raising a family? John is preventing John from raising a family. John. And and perhaps his abrasive personality, I'm going to venture to say, his, his outdated views of, of uh, relationships, perhaps mm-hmm. that is, is contributing. Maybe he just doesn't, maybe in his heart of hearts, he doesn't actually want a relationship, which is fine. Maybe there, there he doesn't that don't want, want the relationships. relationships that he pushes for. Maybe not. Maybe, th- maybe this is all an elaborate... Uh, ploy by himself to push himself in that direction. If he just says it long enough, pretends it long enough, then he'll be it eventually. Right. But it's, I mean, for one, one thing's for certain, it's not society that's preventing him from having his mm-hmm. traditional life. There, there, I'm sure, are plenty of women in whatever area he's at who would be more than happy Texas. To, uh, in Texas, yeah. More than happy to, to settle down and have a family. I mean, he's what, he's what, he's like 21, 22 years old. Yeah, he's like a baby. It, it's not as though he's, he's at the end of his window for uh, finding someone his own age to, to conceive children with. And he's geographically in an area that's better to suit that sort of desire, because he's where all so. the bells are. That's where all the what is? The bells. Oh, the bell, yeah, the Texas bell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, yeah, Texas they, is, is, can be more of a conservative state. As, sure, as so then that state. aligns with his personal yeah, feelings think so. and so, life and whatever. So the idea that, that he somehow gets to blame all of society for something that, that there are no barriers for him to do, which is, is pushed by things like taxes, like the tax code benefits uh, uh, married couples. Um, it, it, it even further benefits people with children. Uh, um, 
There, there, there's, there's all sorts of assistance for, for people that are married and people with children. Um, governmentally. Thing, so the government is pushing him in that direction, mm -hmm. and yet he's still not getting it. Somehow he gets to blame everyone else. Right. But, but when trans people talk about how they're being systemically oppressed, or when uh, people of color talk about how they're being systemically oppressed, well, uh, no, that, that's all your own failing. That's all on you, bud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It should be obvious to anyone who watches him long enough how much of a hypocrite he is. And, and I seriously doubt he even believes half the things he says. He probably doesn't know half the things he says. He just says what gets him the views and the clicks and mm -hmm. keeps this charade going. <laughs> keeps this thing rolling. I've concluded that we may as well give it the old college try, right? Let's actually have some balls. Let's have a competent right-wing government for the first time in decades and frankly probably... Did you want to talk about having <laughs> balls? Okay, talk about it. Uh, I mean, for as, as, as much of a, a, a booster, can't, can't use the S word anymore, that he was for Trump. Promoter. Promoter. Uh, cheerleader. Whatever you want to call it. As much as he really loved Trump. Wow, way to throw him under the bus there with that, that, that comment about we haven't had a, a successful right-wing government in, in decades. Like, they had even... The, the, the House and the Senate and the Presidency, as well as the Supreme Court, uh, all at the same time. And they couldn't accomplish anything, so maybe that's what he's getting at, that they just weren't effective at, at doing it. But, I mean, that's their whole M.O. I mean, that's really the Democrats' M.O. as well, is, is each of them, once they get in power, they do whatever they can to blame the other party for not being able to push their, their legislation across the goal line. Um, and they'll come up with these kind of half-hearted, half-assed... But that's the problem with a two-party system. Absolutely, yeah. It, 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 I, I'm, I'm sure. No one moves anything that way. I'm sure if, if we had more of a parliamentary system, where there was proportional representation, ranked or choice even, voting. Or, yeah, even ranked choice voting, which is a step below um, uh, having proportional representation. But even ranked choice voting, that, that would definitely light a fire under these uh, politicians to actually get something done, because... That would eliminate the, the, all the talk and all the, the fear mongering about the, the spoiler effect that, that, that comes through every mm -hmm. election cycle. Uh, you no longer be able to say, well, you know, if we don't get this done, you got nowhere else to go, so you better just stick with us. Uh, right. So it, it would go a long way to at least holding them a little more accountable. It doesn't, you know, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a silver bullet or anything. Yeah, it's We've not seen that in, in Minneapolis where uh, Mayor Frey was elected using proportional representation and he still cocked up the entire response to Black Lives Matter and the George Floyd killing and, or murder, I should say, and, and all of that sort of thing. So it's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, but yeah, both, both these parties do the same thing. So if you're looking at effectiveness and, and all that stuff, I mean, who's even hearkening back to? Is it, is it, is it Bush the second? Like he, he successfully got us into two protracted wars that we're not quite all the way out of either one of. I mean, we're technically out of Iraq, but, and, and we're technically winding things down in, in uh, Afghanistan, but there's still U.S. bases in both of those countries, and, and there probably will be for the foreseeable future. We're, we're still using them as, as a, to be the, the power hegemon in the region, you know, project our, our U.S. imperialism into the surrounding region um, and make sure the oil keeps flowing. Um, mm -hmm. and it's no, so, no small part of that. Uh, is he hearkening back to uh, Bush first? 1950s. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what I think he wants. So he wants like Eisenhower? Is that what he's. Was the, is that his guy? He definitely loves to, to LARP as that, that time period. You know, his entire mm -hmm. opening thing is, is a big fever dream of stuff that he doesn't have. Right. Um, or so, stuff yeah. that he secretly has. I, see, if he, if he... Come on, do you think this guy would miss any opportunity to flex, though? Like, that's all he likes to do. I think he likes complaining more. I mean, that could be. You never know the inner workings of, of these figures' lives, but, but I would suspect that, yeah, that car that's in the opening sequence, not his car, uh, that girl who pecks him on the cheek and runs away out of the frame never to be seen again, uh, 
was a hired actress. And a child. <laughs> oh, don't. Don't even go there. Uh, it's part of the opening sequence, is it not? Okay, she didn't look like a child to me, but 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 anyway, definitely not his his girlfriend or, or his. No, I'm saying there wife. was a child. There's a child. Oh, that oh, runs up and to... the child. I thought yes. you said and she was a child. No. Okay, well that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah, the kid that that, <laughs> like, that comes and where are gives you, going with you know this? daddy a hug. Well, that's I I misheard you. I I, I apologize. Um, the, the the one that comes and gives him a hug doesn't have any kids. Uh, the, the, the suit and tie, he's never worn that suit and tie in this, so maybe that's even rented. No, he's worn suits and ties before. Not like, not like with his, his, you know, newspaper fedora. reporter's fedora and all that yeah. shit. Um, I'm just trying to get these cords up a little more so they're not knocking against it. Nick knock, Nick knock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's a little better. Um. Yeah, his entire opening is, is one big LARP. So we know that he definitely does fetishize that, that time period, even though he was born in, in like 2000. Um, so it's, it's entirely possible that even his parents were not alive in that time, uh, let alone parent. I mean, they certainly weren't parents in that time. Um, his grandparents probably were. Maybe weren't. his grandparents were, and, and like he just loves the stories Infants from his grandparents. Of, of his grandparents' infancy. Yeah, yeah, like really. <laughs> Like 2000. I, I, I turned like 17 in 2000, turned 18 in 2001. I could conceivably be old enough to be his father. So. That's fun for you. Yeah, that's real fun for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he's hearkening back generations, way many more generations than he has any sort of reference for. Um, where things might have been pretty darn good for the white man who could... Uh, go to his, his union factory job, which, you know, he'll never, he'll never put that part of it in there, that, that the reason there was middle class at all is because of the efforts of leftists who pushed for things like unions, the 40-hour work week, the weekend, uh, paid sick leave, um, working conditions, on and on and on. He'll, he'll never credit any of that to his, his, his you know, e utopia time frame. Uh, but anyway... It was real good for, for the white man who could go to his union job at that time and make enough money to provide for his entire family just doing assembly line work or something like that, which is something that should be available to anyone today. There's nothing wrong with that sort of a scenario, as long as it's for everybody, not just the white man. And that's, that's, the, that's the rub that he never quite gets to, is that for everybody else, it kind of sucked. I mean, legal segregation... Um, brutal repression of the civil rights movement. Uh, the, you know, the Red Scare, people being uh, blackballed from their jobs just for espousing any sort of leftist ideas. On and on and on. So yeah, um, that very well might be what, what he's hearkening back to, but it's, it's hard to know because again, Everything He's never going to be specific. It's always just vague enough that he'll 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 want his viewers to uh, fill in the blanks for him, so mm -hmm. that they can put whatever monster or boogeyman they they are most afraid of in in, in place Boogie of boogeyman monster man or put whatever you know utopian vision that they prefer. You know, oh he must be talking about Reagan. Oh he must be talking about uh, Nixon. Oh he must be talking about Eisenhower. You know, right? Fill in the blank. It's it's. Yeah, that, and that, that's what he wants you to do mm -hmm. when he's being so vague. Ever, because if we lose, we are going to be regarded as the greatest, most impressively pathetic group of people to ever exist, that we let our country be destroyed by communists. Literal communists who masturbate to cartoon animals. Who are these communists? Because we were too comfortable watching Netflix and browsing TikTok, blowing the home court advantage to literal communist perverts. That will be the biggest L in the history of mankind. And so the last thing I'll say about this before we get into the list is that the reason we used to be a much happier, much more unified, much more free country is because they only surveyed white people. Ba -dum -bum -bum. <laughs> that was a terrible. I was trying to go ba dum tis or ba dum ching, but it didn't, didn't I come I thought you were trying to make an air horn sound. <laughs> yeah, that works too. Yeah, these statistics from back in this era almost always left out people of color, poor people, um, any sort of person that was not the, the, the typical white man. And they, they left out women as well, routinely. They, they just allowed the, the man to speak for the household. So... 
mean, ladies have only been allowed to vote for a hundred years, so... And, again, back to the union issue. Even if people were more happy at that time, or even if a certain subset of people were more happy at that time, that was due to union participation. That was due to higher average wages because of those unions. Because you had someone to advocate for you. Because you had someone to advocate, you. advocate for you, precisely. And it was worth paying into. Absolutely. And it, I mean, it still is today. Mm-hmm. Unions are not all dead and gone. They, they, they still exist. I wish there were more. I absolutely do, too. Because I would be in one, for sure. For sure, yeah. I mean, uh, listeners, viewers out there, uh, think, of, think of any job you've had um, where you had to work for somebody else. You're not working on your own. I'm, I'm sure you can come up with examples where they broke their own rules in an egregious way. Perhaps it was for food service, and someone got badly burned by the fryer, and they just swept it under the rug. Perhaps it was shorting you hours, um, hoping that you won't look at your, your paycheck. Um, or making so you can't look at your check stuff. Making so you can't look at your check stuff. Uh, calling you in on the weekend when you said you're definitely not able to work the weekend. The, any number of things. Those are the sorts of things that a union can stop. Those, mm-hmm. and, and at the very least, if they can't stop it for whatever reason, they can fine your company uh, money for, for, for doing that. Um, that. That happened all the time. I worked briefly for the Postal Service. They had a very strong union. And during the, the holiday season, they were routinely overworking these carriers, um, pushing them longer and longer. I mean, we were out for 12-hour days easily. And... Mm-hmm. Every time that happened, that they violated the union contract, all they had to do was go to the union rep and, and tell them, and they would make sure that it was, and it was routinely like a $100 fine for every violation. So people were piling up thousands and thousands of dollars just from, from violations. Um, and you can guarantee that they would have tried to get away with a whole lot more had that union not been there. Mm-hmm. Which sucks, because the postal service is awesome. Yeah. And I think it's a great job, but you just have to be willing to give up your entire life. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they really work the newbies hard. You, you don't have a weekend day off for the first about year and a half, which is ultimately why I had to quit because I have, I have young kids. I got, you know, mm-hmm. other family and friends that I want to be able to see at least sometimes on the weekend, you know, um, and, and that, that was just how it was. Mm-hmm. So... Not, not perfect, even having a union. Uh, they definitely could have done better for their new carriers. But you were never... I don't think you ever but felt, I never felt unheard. Well. Right. I, I, I knew that, you know, um, there was one time when I had forgotten a couple packages and I got called into the office. There was a union rep with me to make sure that the boss didn't try anything to, to like, you know, take pay when he wasn't allowed to or to threaten me in a way that he wasn't allowed to either. That sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely appreciated very much having a union while, while I was at that job. Um, so yeah, that's but but bringing it back to John Doyle, never gonna acknowledge that part of it. That's why that unions built the middle class. There's just no two ways about it. Um, you can look at the same sort of work that they were doing back then, and and the the relative pay. And, and it was many times more for, for jobs that have lost their unions than it, than it would be today. So you look at factory work today, you'd be lucky to get $15 an hour. You're lucky to get even a, a livable wage of, of, say, $20 an hour, depending on whatever area you're in. Back then, pretty much guaranteed that you, you could survive. You know, all you need was a college diploma. You could walk right into any, any plant, any factory, any, any sort of place, and you'd be pretty, pretty confident in... in, in knowing that you were going to get a job that could support an entire family on that. You could get a house, you could get, uh, you know, a reliable vehicle, you could get all the things that, that um, people always talk about. Mm-hmm. You could make it. That was, the, that was the original American dream, was no matter where you're from, you could make it. And again, didn't work for everybody. You definitely had to be the, the right skin color for it to, to work for you. But for those people, it did work very well. There's no reason we can't have... That component of it again today, but for everybody, you know. So, I'll, I mean, it takes a lot of hard work and, and union organizing, and, and corporations are, are much more powerful even today than they were back then. So, 
I mean, we all saw the, the sort of tricks that Amazon pulled when that Alabama warehouse tried to unionize, where they were changing the, the signals, the light signals at uh, the entrance so that people would not have any time to stop at the light before they left the, the warehouse and so that the people organizing for the union couldn't stop them and talk to them about it. They, they required the post office to move the, the drop box for the union ballots uh, onto the premises so that they could see who was voting and who was not. All these sorts of intimidation tactics and, and ways of manipulation that they employed. So I'm not saying it's easy. It's definitely not. Um, but, I mean, you kind of have to look at the big picture. And that's that you're worth it. You're worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone is worth a living wage. Everyone deserves to have food, water, shelter, clothing, transportation, education, communication, community. Those are, those are basically the basics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's continue. No, that was okay. Let's keep going. It isn't because that was just like the natural state of our existence. It's because to be a communist 100 years ago was almost exactly what it's like to be a right-wing person now in 2021. It's almost one to one. When I say communist, I'm speaking broadly. I mean, you can say that people are canceled for being, I know, I'm <laughs> sorry, but like, it's, it's just that, like, I, like the title says for this stream, it's the lies per second. You can't just let them fly by or else you end up missing big chunks of what he's trying to slip in there. It's as bad to be a, a right-winger now as it was to be a communist back then. Come on. Come on. Absolutely not true. You, you could argue that people are getting canceled for being conservative, but that's not the case. People are, are losing their jobs for saying blatantly racist things on, on Twitter or, or other social media, which looks bad for their company, and their company decides to end its relationship with them. Um, but that's awful, because, like, how dare you? But no one just talking about being a conservative, or even whatever religion they are. No one talking about that at work is going to get fired for that. That, that doesn't happen. No one is, is fired for voting one way or another. It's, it's, it's <laughs> such a, a, a disingenuous comparison. Uh, people were threatened who were communists. People were, were firebombed. They had their houses firebombed. They were, they were shot and killed. Um, as soon as, as, as Martin Luther King Jr., started uh, espousing more openly different socialist beliefs about uh, how we all need workplace equality and that sort of thing. That's when he ended up being assassinated. Mm -hmm. uh, and and he, he was not the only one from that time either. Um, utter, utter ridiculousness. It's a, it's a totally non sequitur of a comparison. Coalition, which all of these interest groups what? are ultimately serving. Oh, they're bumping. anti American, they're anti family, they're anti God, they're anti white. Yeah. There we go. See, this is when he just cycles through it. Let's go. Point by point. Anti family. Yeah, but it goes so fast. Oh my gosh. Natural state of We're never going to get through this. It's because to be a communist 100 years ago was almost exactly what it's like to be a right wing person now in 2021. It's almost one to one. And when I say communist, I'm speaking broadly uh, about the coalition which all of these interest groups are ultimately serving. They're anti American. Anti, oh, so, so anti American. I don't know how you could be any particular political philosophy and be anti American unless you, I suppose maybe you just want the union to be no more. Mm -hmm. I guess that would be anti American, but. Certainly not going to define what, what it is to be un American. American, they're anti family. Anti family. Okay, so, so I don't even know who these communists are that he's talking about, but people on the left, even the liberals, they're, they're talking about more inclusive versions of family. I was just about to say oh, that. Oh, okay. Like, Take it away then. No, like, all couples should be able to have kids, yeah. adopt kids, yeah. do surrogacy, whatever. That seems pretty pro-family to me. Yeah. That, that's wanting to have more family. I think maybe what John meant to say was... Anti this particular family, this right. cishet, uh, 2.4 children, right. Christian, white family. Right. That and family. even that's not true. No one is saying that shouldn't be a thing. No. If that is what your heart desires, and that is what you want, and that's how you feel, then you should absolutely have that sure you find someone you click with if, if they if they happen to be whatever race that it doesn't really matter it, you know if they happen to be one religion or another 
uh, as long as you guys can reconcile that sort of thing, no, no matter what it is, as right. long as you can form a good, stable partnership, go at it. Or even if you're two different religions. Or two different, yeah. As long as you can reconcile that, sure. Like, uh, my ex-wife was, was Jewish and I was uh, nothing. Um, <laughs> she was not particularly religious, but, but still, there were concerns going into to that marriage about differences in religion and it it's a conversation yeah, to it was be had. It's a conversation to be had. We, we, we had worked through it, and uh, yeah, it never it never became that big of an issue. For some people, it might be, and they may decide not to have a marriage mm-hmm. because of that. That's fine, but that's their personal decisions. That has nothing to do with societal pressures. Right. There's no one. In, there's no one on the left. None, none of these so-called communists. Who uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be tripping over you too. Why don't you go ahead and then I'll finish. What about people who can't have kids like myself? People who can't have kids. So I'm um, just not allowed to get married? Like, yeah. how does that work? Yeah. What do you, what do, you do with me? Um, I, I guess wonder. You're, you're invalid in John Doyle's eyes. And, you know, oh. the further you go along in this video, the more you, 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 you start to form the idea that John Doyle's ideal society is that of Gilead from The, the, the Handmaid's Tale. Oh, you'd be so happy. You would be happy as a clam, if, if, even if you got to be like uh, the Nick character, just being a driver um, and, and serving a commander, a very strong and powerful cishet Christian man who, who, who takes what he wants and, and all this stuff. Oh, I'm sure he'd be delighted in that sort of a world. Um, so for all of his vagaries, all of his, his trying to shroud things in, in, you know, I'm not quite saying this, but I kind of mean that, mm. the more you listen to him, the more it becomes clear. What he wants is a fascist state where um, religion and, and uh, specifically the Christian, I don't know if he's Catholic, I don't know if he has a particular denomination, but mm-hmm. whatever his denomination is, I'm sure, is, is infused in every part of the government and where white people are on top and LGBTQIA people either don't, either keep so low that no one ever knows it or they're probably executed in his mind um, or, or just completely cast out of society in one way or another. Uh, so there's, it's very rigid, no deviation at all from, from these few categories that he's listing off right now. And everyone else can just go screw themselves, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, basically, The Handmaid's Tale or, or any other sort of fascist society, whether it's, it's in fiction or whether it's, it's real. This, these are the sorts of things that they like. Right. Very rigid social order, um, at least, you know, platitudes or, 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 or placation of the, the prevailing religion um, and very, quote unquote, traditional gender roles and, and no deviation and, and mm-hmm. strict punishment up to and including death for people that, that are deviant in their mind in any way. Right. Only they're anti-God, they're anti-white. To anti-God, no one is being anti-God. No one is saying you can't believe well, in God. You can have whatever you want to have as long as you're not hurting other people or forcing your view on everyone else. Absolutely, yeah. You you, you want to worship the flying spaghetti monster? Have at it, dude. Right. Like, that's totally Barilla. fine. Barilla. <laughs> um, you wanna you wanna take a, a more established an older religion? Um, Sure. Yeah. As long as you're not like, 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 exactly as you say. As long as you're not trying to force it on others, you want to or, be Amish or down the throat of people through government policy. Uh, fine with me. I really, do, I don't care. You can live your your Christian life. Um, you can be a white person. It doesn't matter as long as you're not using those things to harm others. Mm-hmm. That's pretty simple. That's what. That's the the the, re- the true premise of the left. Is you can be whatever you want, even including things that, that don't necessarily align with the left, as long as you're not trying to harm, harm others, as long as you're not trying to, to or, or also push others to harm others. Right. And then he says anti-white. Yeah, he well, says anti-white. Yeah, of course. Ugh. Like, the focus on all these things is about inclusion, not exclusion. Right. About equality. Right. Um, about teaching all of history, not just the parts that are, are not the white parts. most convenient and, and make uh, the, these great men of history uh, George Washington look good in their best light. Yeah. John Adams. Yeah. 
Um, so many of these, these, these so-called founding fathers had some pretty massive flaws, including owning slaves, things that would be considered absolutely abhorrent today. Um, is there any reason we should hold them up as, as, as model heroes. citizens or, or things that we have to tack towards as a society? I don't think so. But they are. I mean, I've worked in a few schools now. Mm-hmm. Or they're revered. Cause, yeah. Because they whitewash the whole thing. They, right. They, they, they will talk about uh, George Washington not telling a lie and, and having wooden teeth, not telling you that those wooden teeth were actually mostly slave teeth mm-hmm. uh, that he took from his slaves. They ignore him having slaves at all. I don't remember that ever being brought up in American history. Right. Through any of my classes, you know, um, elementary school, middle school, high school, um, even in college. Like, I didn't take American history in college. I took other histories. But, um, yeah, that was never mentioned that he even had slaves. And he did. So did Jefferson. Mm -hmm. Um, Jefferson famously had had raped several of his slaves and had children with them. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, if you want to teach true history, then you can't. You got to take the good with the bad. Right. And that's all that, that, that people on the left want is a true accounting, so that we're not just blindly marching forward under this this false idea that these and these re- great men of history who could do no wrong just you know stood upon the hilltop and declared there shall be a, a great nation here, and it was so with the wave of their hand. This is this is getting towards the point of deifying these people when they were horribly flawed individuals who had terrible ideas uh, and and maybe a good idea or two. But they shouldn't just be worshipped as as though they were infallible. And Mm -hmm. we shouldn't pretend that because that's all part of this fascist mythology that that these groups will use to um, justify them being on top of society. So so the, the unspoken part, again, is that um, the, the American, Christian, family-oriented, white, cis, straight men of history built this because they were somehow inherently greater than the people they encountered, than the natives, than the people they enslaved, than the immigrants that came later from other countries. That's what's, what's hinted at. That's what's strongly hinted at um, in, in all of this sort of rhetoric, is, is building it up to our there's something exceptional about these particular class and, and race of people. And there's not. Mm-hmm. There's not. They, they, they happen to be in the right place at the right time. They, they happen to take advantage of certain accidents of history and, and trading routes and, and all these sorts of things to get where they were at in their technology relative to others. And they just use that to dominate and brutalize other people. So even if you revere the art and the technology that, that these people came up with, what did they do with that technology? They, they used it to kill and enslave people that they found to be inferior because they weren't them. So. Sorry. Sorry to bring the mood down. Look at, look at the freaking picture he used for the white guy, too. His, his pullover sweater and tie and his glass of water. Because anything else is just too spicy. Just play it. <laughs> They're degenerate, etc. And actually, on that note, another important thing that no one talks about: why we were fighting communism. The fight against communism. It wasn't about wanting to be able to, like, you know, run to Walmart at 11 p.m., get a pint of Ben and Jerry's and a phone charger. No, it actually had very little to do with capitalism. It was about the soul of the nation. It was about the fact that communists were godless, and we knew that. And we knew that without God, we would decay into basically where we are now. Without evidence that any any of those things follow, as though we're not God, as as though we are a, a somehow godless nation now, when still the majority of people believe in Christianity, not even just any religion, but Christianity. That's still the number one religion. Let's, in fact, we're going to look up some statistics now that that our our, our little friend has gone. Well, he's pulling up statistics. I'd also like to just mention as a side note, look at the Scandinavian countries who have some of the lowest rates of having religious groups in their country, and then look at the wars that those countries get involved in. Just Mm -hmm. gonna put that out there. So how about that? This is the Pew Research. Um, 
group. They, they're, they're considered to be one of the most reputable sources on any sort of polling. They're, they're up there with Gallup. Um, and they did a survey about religion in America. And it looks like Christian came in at 70%. Somehow the sky's falling in John's world, though. Somehow that's, that's not nearly enough. Um, you look down at the, the, the so-called godless part, the, the other faiths, which include unaffiliated religious nuns. And that's, not, that's not nuns, N-U-N. It's N-O-N-E-S. Like, have no religion that they, they listed or, or, or nothing in particular. Uh, what? We, we, we have uh, 22%. 22% and, and apparently they're going to take over the entire country. We'll get another comment from you. Oh boy. And our kitty bread book shit. Uh, that's, that's so funny. Kropotkin was a racist asshole. Oh no. Oh man, he's wounded me to the core. What am I gonna do? I don't know. I'll probably just ban you, I guess. <laughs> I mean, uh, is this what you do with your time? Ubalongangalaga Gulag? You, oh, I get it. You belong in gulag. Is this what you do with your time? Is this how you get your jollies? Is just say stupid shit to, to random streamers? That's not even that good of a troll. You're just, you're giving it away too fast, my friend. You gotta at least reel them in a little bit. Um. <laughs> so, that's, that's enough for me. Well, actually... We'll just ban you. See ya. Now how do I get back to the chat? Without... I want that to go away. I don't know how to do that. Oh, uh, no. I'm not going to do that. Don't let me do that. Time out. Messages to me. I don't know what's wrong with this particular pane, but it's just not showing me everything. There it is. Now I can get rid of it. Okay. We are back. So good try there, friend. Hopefully you find someone else who's triggered by that sort of stuff. But it ain't gonna be me. You belong in Gulag. Wow. You're not even trying with that name, really. Maybe you, that's the point. But then what? But really, then what is the point of coming into a space and, and just saying stuff? Just like, to be disruptive. You're just getting, like, is it like just a badge of honor that you can get? Oh, I got banned from from 31 people that I just said offensive shit to. Oh, ha! ha. What Maybe. what a good day. I I guess like if your if your goal is just to go on a banning world world tour and get banned by as many channels as possible. Good luck to you. I guess I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, uh, back to those statistics, as, as we just saw, 70% of people still Christian in America. Only 22% are, are non-religious, and uh, of non-Christian faiths, it's 5.9%. Uh, so, so again, when, they, when they, they try to scare you about things like uh, Muslim people coming to the country, it's 0.9% of the population. 0.9%, that's not enough to win any sort of national election. Even if they all voted in lockstep, which they don't. They're, they're, they're a very politically diverse group of people. I've met people from all ends of the political spectrum who happen to be Muslim. Uh, same is true of, of the Jewish faith. Same is true of Christians. There, there are plenty of, of liberal and, and left even Christians. There, there are groups like the Catholic Workers Party, which is an anarchist Christian group. There's um, Christian liberationists. There's there's a whole bunch of actual left Christianity. It's it's probably not statistically significant. Uh, I'm sure it falls into that other Christian category of 0.4 percent. But but still, um, yeah. Just just a side note. None of these things are, are monoliths either. But but the idea that Christianity is just going away because it went from 100 percent at the time of the founding of the country to 70 percent now over 200 years later, coming up on 250 years later. Well, it's just nonsense. So, so don't be scared of this sort of thing is, is the bottom line. Don't be scared. He's, he's, he's 
hoping that you're not going to look up even these statistics or that you're going to then misinterpret them in some way to stay afraid. What were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say that, like, Muslims usually don't come knocking at your door well, yeah. to try to convert you like some other groups do. Thank you, Jules420, uh, for the follow. Uh, my thoughts on Christianity? Uh, that's what you're asking about? Um, I, I, I don't really have a problem with Christianity either way. I, I was raised in the Christian faith. I was, I was raised a Lutheran. Uh, I, got, I went through confirmation, did the First Communion, did all of that stuff, and then didn't quite make sense to me uh, after I got out of high school, so it just kind of faded away. And I, I consider myself to be, um, I, would, I would say agnostic. Like, I don't ever want to say that, that there is or is not a, a, any sort of supernatural force in the world. Um, I just don't know. But, but Christians themselves and Christianity, I don't exactly have a problem as long as they're not using their faith to harm others. That's, that's, where I, that's where I would draw my, my line with pretty much any tradition uh, or any philosophy. Um, and, if, and if you are using it to harm others, it better be because you are actively being oppressed by someone who is, who is being completely unjust to you. So, so that, that does change the equation. But at, at, as it stands, at least in the U.S., Christians are not being oppressed, um, despite what... what Fox News or whoever would, would have you believe. So that's fine. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, so if you're, if you're just joining us too, we're, we're talking about John Doyle of Hekoff Kami's new video where he's talking about the, the five new conservative policies to take our country back. And we are critiquing it from a leftist perspective. There's a reason that we mandated that in God we trust be inscribed on our currency. Do you, do you, do you know anything about how, how that came about, the in God we trust on the currency? Yeah. Basically, it was the same sort of fear-mongering. People were afraid that the country was losing its faith, losing its, its, its Christian, Judeo-Christian values, as they like to couch it, so it's not just Christianity. They can say, oh, no, no, it's also Judaism. But anyway... They were afraid of that same sort of thing, so they, they had a big push and they got it put on the currency. It didn't used to be on the currency, just like under God didn't used to be in the Pledge of Allegiance. They got that put in there as well for, for same, the same sort of fear-mongering reasons that John Doyle is now espousing. Basically that. In 1955, your grandparents probably saw that change happen, and it wasn't because we loved capitalism and consumption. Though the irony is that as we've lost God and we've become decadent and greedy and the money that we so idolize still has that inscription, that's beside the point. The point is that if you showed an American man... If we've become so consumerist, says the man who spends the first, like, five to ten... No, I guess it must have only been five minutes um, of his, his show hawking products that people don't exactly need. Mm in the 1950s, what his country would become within the next 100 years, he'd want to go back to the drawing board. But anyways, think about that. Why were you never taught about how we used to treat communists the same way that they now treat right-wing people? It's how because is that? That is what is necessary to defeat them and actually conserve and protect the nation. They don't want that. They like it when you think that you have principles. I'm going to beat you in the marketplace of ideas. The hits just keep on coming. Uh, so the marketplace of ideas is a conservative talking point. How, that they're always using to say, well, you know, can't you just beat us in the marketplace of ideas, you know, and, and there's, they kind of give away the game in that because when you're talking about marketing a certain product, you're not necessarily telling someone that they need to have your product because you actually think they need it. You're telling them they need it because you want to make some money. So extending that to the marketplace of ideas it's not even necessarily about what ideas that you think are right or that, that are right. It's about what ideas can be packaged in, in the most agreeable and, and broadly appealing way. That's the ones that end up winning out. It has nothing to do with being right or logically consistent or, or any of these other things. It's, it's a big reason I've turned away from like, uh, the debate bro sort of culture because they, they, they focus so much on just rhetorical flourish. You know, how can I make my opponent look stupid and weak? And, and, and just, you know, hope that, that that's good enough to, to sway my audience. Um, 
much more so than actual any sort of exchange of ideas, any sort of real honest conversation. It's all just winning, pummel, 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 make them look dumb, and you win. And, and then you can declare victory that your idea is better, even though it has nothing to do with the merits of your idea. What are your, what are your thoughts on, on the marketplace of ideas? Is that, a, is that a term you're familiar with? No, so I don't really have any thoughts on that. That's okay. I mean, you can probably imagine what it entails. Is the, it's, it's all those guys who are like, well, why don't you just debate me? Debate me. Debate. It's like the guy who was in here earlier. Mm-hmm. Oh, what about, well, give me your statistics. Oh, oh. You know, they're, they're demanding all this information from you just to, to have a point of view. And yeah, it, it, what it ends up doing is just derailing discussion, shutting people down, and, and nothing is ever going to be good enough for them. No amount of information. Because they always have to fall back on, oh, I don't believe that source. That's a so-and-so source, so it's invalid. Or statistics are invalid entirely because of this, that, and the other thing. So it's a meaningless game when it comes down to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's better just to be honest and, and talk about your own ideas. And if you can find other honest people to be engaged with, to do that. But otherwise, don't really waste your breath or your, your typing. Which, by the way, they'll just kick you out of anyway because the left can act with total impunity because they have virtually all of the institutional power and you have none of it. A hundred years ago, we used to target communists. And so again, how does the left have all the institutional power? It, he's, not gonna, he's, not, he's definitely not going to back that up with anything mm-hmm. bec- because, what, they're, they're in control of education. Is that, is that it? That's always been the charge. Ever since there's been in- educational institutions, it's always been a charge that they are, you know, degrading society with their, their liberal or leftist ideas. Yeah, except most of the people who have the education to be in education mm-hmm. end up being liberal themselves. That's, that's just and a that's facet just of education, yeah. Like, they're just liberals, not even leftists. Right. That's a whole other... They're just open-minded to at least some ideas. Right. Um, so what time does he imagine where that wasn't the case? Certainly, the, the, there were some strong and robust uh, educational institutions uh, back in the 50s, which he so likes to idolize. Does he think that they were somehow not progressive for their time? Does he, does he not understand that, that a lot of the, the uh, for instance, the, the student nonviolent movement started in universities uh, around that same era? Um, and, and you can go back and back. Uh, um, suffrage. I'm sh- certain that, that universities had a big role in women's suffrage. Um, I'm certain they had a big role in, in civil rights. Uh, universities are a place of ideas. That's just part of their nature. And, and if you're someone who likes to, to learn about different things and, and see different ideas in action and, and, and just ponder things, you're going to tend to be more open-minded, and you're just going to tend to be more liberal. That, that's not a, a, a character evaluation. That's not saying you're a bad person or a good person. Uh, and, the, and the converse, the, the opposite is, 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 is not true necessarily either. If you don't go to the university, it doesn't mean you're dumb. It doesn't mean you're closed-minded. It doesn't mean any of those things. Um, it, it does tend to mean that you're, you're less likely to be liberal. But that's it. Um, so I don't again I don't know what this imagined era that he's hearkening back to even is because it never existed at least not as he conceptualizes it so what other institutions what the media the media has always been charged with being liberal I can't I can't think of a time where people talked about the conservative news media They've always been, again, it's the sort of people that are attracted to it, are the people that want to shake things up, especially in the investigative reporting sectors. They want to challenge the status quo. These are inherently liberal ideas. So that will have always been the case as long as there's been uh, newspapers as, as, and, and other news-gathering institutions. I, I, I don't get it. I, does he just mean that, that Biden happens to have the presidency and, and both houses of Congress? Is that the, the, the institutions he's talking about? We can only really speculate because he's not going to say it. He's just going to be super vague about it. Mm. Did you have anything 
I'm gonna add it up. That's, that's fine. I'm moving along. In the, in the government, in academia, in the media, you would be fired, blacklisted, maybe even charged. Now look where we are. Tables have turned. By the 1960s, they had taken over academia. By the 2000s, right-wing thought was non-existent. By the 2010s, 2010s, any student or faculty who dissented would be targeted. You will be made to conform. They did the same thing with similar timelines in public education, big business, media, Hollywood, etc. And so we have no idea how to push back. We are fish in a barrel. There are no right-wing organizations dedicated to getting individuals to strategize and infiltrate these apparatus. <laughs> I hate that I have to stop so often, but I do. Um, the idea that there's no right-wing organizations to, to push institutional power is just completely laughable. Prager you. Prager you. For, for one, a, a, a very large organization that just pushes out propaganda on conservative talking points. Um, Fox News. Somehow is always not part of the media in their calculation, but it's very right-wing, and it, it is, I, I believe it's still the the most watched news network of any of them. Um, talk radio has for decades been dominated by right-wing ideologues. And there's, there's even more institutions like, uh, oh boy, I can't remember the name of it offhand, but, but Scalia, Antonin Scalia was a member of this group of, of, uh, that would push conservative lawyers uh, into into judgeship positions. That, that's how we got his start. Same thing with Brett Kavanaugh. Um, there are all sorts of conservative institutions trying to keep things as they are. All sorts of uh, conservative religious colleges across the country. Uh, some of the most, uh, I guess not most prestigious colleges are um, overtly religious, but, but uh, even ones like uh, there's Oh, I want to say it's the Harvard Divinity School is, is very popular. Um, there's the, the entire uh, Chicago School of Economics that, that produced all sorts of right-winger economists. There's tons of, of institutional power behind right-wingers. <laughs> okay. What? Oh, nothing. I, just, I was hoping you had no. <laughs> some thoughts or something. I want to keep this moving because oh, oh, okay. back it's after five. and we're too busy right. raising $100,000 to totally own AOC because we act like literal children. We have no right-wing George Soros. We don't even have our military. Anymore. No right-wing George Soros. There's the Koch brothers. Well, the one Koch brother left. Um, there's all sorts of, of conservative billionaires that donate tons to political campaigns Donald every Trump, Donald Lincoln. Trump himself huge donator to the Republicans. Bush family uh-huh there's so many way more in fact billionaires that, that donate to conservative causes and conservative campaigns than there are I'm sure the NRA on the liberal side the, the NRA still even though its power is waning is, is still a massive organization very influential um, the policemen's unions across the country all very conservative organizations um, hell-bent on defending the, the police no matter what they do, no matter how bad their misconduct is. Um. Any more? Side note, do not join the military. Maybe I'll do a video on that. How is the military a left-wing organization? I just... Later. But think about this. They're mm -hmm. in such firm control over you that they can commit legitimate acts of violence and terrorism. Don't join the military, but I'm going to have a cool military guy and military regalia on the wall behind me. Yeah, what the hell is that about? I'm gonna fetishize the military, but tell you not to join it. Only from a certain era. Yeah, he's join the, the join the military of the 1950s. Good idea. That's what he's stuck in. Look at. <clears throat> wow. It's 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 mind-boggling. Do you listen to federal police when they tell you that you can enter a building as long as you don't break anything? <laughs> oh, because they definitely didn't break anything. Because they're not co-conspirators with these people. Like, they, there was plenty of videos of them just allowing people in. And they were treated so gently compared to how uh, yeah, Black what Lives Matter was. Yeah, about the cop that uh, got a fire extinguisher taken to the right. head? They, the, the protesters a even officer. killed a police officer. They would be nothing but wall-to-wall -wall coverage. On all the news networks, if, if, if uh, BLM or another... Um, justice organization had done the same sorts of thing. Um, 
some of them face charges for for breaking the law. Okay, so did a lot of yeah, protesters like, oh, on the break left. Anything. Who, they just went through federal documents and exposed information that wasn't theirs to expose. Yeah, I mean, there's that too. Um, yeah, like it's. I just can't fathom how he believes that this was somehow a plot against right-wingers to allow them into the building. He was probably there. No, he's probably busy moving across country for three months. Well, six months, because this was in January. I think he came out, didn't he come out with some video, like, right after, and that was, like, the last one? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It does. They will arrest you and write the history books to compare you to the 9-11 hijackers. Uh, by Metro Times readers. That sounds like an opinion poll, um, for one thing, or an opinion piece, that is. By Metro Times readers. Why 1 6 was worse than 9 11. And did the police write that? Like, he just said they're, they're gonna arrest you and then turn around and make you look like worse than 9 11. That was not the same people that wrote whatever the hell article he's referencing. What what is it the Metro Times readers? I I would like to get into it more, but I think you're you're, you're okay, so to we your essentially have two options: occupy That's a power structure or die, like literally die. And probably Ooh. the only way to go about this is to who literally died? Who died? Not a single uh, January sixth protester was killed. Well, I mean, oh, oh, uh, oh there's let me re- a couple. Let me let me retract that. There was the one who got shot trying to break into the, the Senate chambers. So one person did die. And there was a couple of police officers who, through circumstances that, that happened that day, ended up either dying or taking their own lives later on. There may have been one more protester who, who fell and ended up getting seriously injured. I don't know if they ended up dying, but, but really, mm-hmm. th- we're talking about a handful of people here for that particular event. So who's, who are all these people who are literally dying at the hands of, of the communists? I would like to know the same thing that they do. We need to have our own long march through the institutions. We need tens of thousands of disciplined, hyper-focused, patient, highly motivated individuals. Also, to anyone thinking, well, how do you know your ideas are correct? What if you're wrong and communism's actually correct and better? I don't even know how to answer that. Like, like, am I supposed to not be confident in my beliefs, having done the homework? Do you think it's possible for us to know right from wrong? Do you need to see my math? Can I show you a picture of what the other side looks like? This is his, his grand evidence that some people that got arrested have funny haircuts. That's, that's pretty damning. That must mean that an entire, uh, you know, coming up on 200 year tradition was, was completely false. Is that actual Jake? No. Not like it that. looks like it. <laughs> it looks like actual Jake. All right. Um, these are just a random assortment of people that were arrested. Some of them look funny, or they have funny haircuts, or they look angry. Um, Because, you know, mug shots traditionally are are basically the same thing as glamour shots, right? You know, you're going to look your best after you've been beaten up by cops and uh, thrown in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. But this is his grand evidence. So so no need to... to, he's, He's done his homework. Just trust him. Look at this collage he created. Yeah, look at this collage he created. Of actual people. These, you know... And let's, let's even assume that every one of those people are as terrible as he believes. Those are a handful of people out of the millions that, that, that believe 16. in leftist ideas. Yeah. 16 leftists. 16 leftists are, are supposed to speak for the, the millions group. more. Absolute bullets. Like, mm-hmm. he could easily be among those people. He doesn't look so different. He's, he's a pretty average looking dude, just like all of these people are. Mm-hmm. Average looking people. Who who some of them have funny hair. Oh. Like because honestly that's like the most compelling argument at this point. That's the but most simply- if that's the most compelling argument, he's given it away that he has got nothing. He has no no evidence to back up that his claims that, that his ideas are inherently right and and all the leftist ideas are inherently wrong. Which he by the way boils down entirely to communism, not the only leftist idea. But I digress. Please put- The right tends to be more correct because our thinking is fundamentally rooted in reality and nature, and the left tends to be more... Because they're not the biggest science deniers about the vaccine, about climate change, about the transgender issue. 
about any number of things. They're rooted in, in reality, though, and science, not the left, though, with, with all of our institutions of learning that we apparently control. Right. Or incorrect, because their thinking is fundamentally rooted in idealism. It's, it's literally like a rejection of reality and nature. But here's the so... Yeah, the left wants a better world. What's, what's wrong with imagining how things could be better and trying to work towards it? Mm-hmm. Okay bring truth. And I wish this weren't the case, but everything throughout history suggests that it is, which is that it's not enough to just be right. You have to have the power to disseminate that truth because people aren't that smart. They're basically lemmings. And now we can see how he views his audience. People aren't that smart. He didn't say the left wasn't that smart. He said all people. <laughs> all people on their phone. So that, Even that's, though his... that's really what he's hoping. Go Even ahead. Even though his page says that uh, the Mensa members get special treatment. Oh, yeah, yeah, his, his donation the page. Mensa. The Mensa level. <laughs> special treatment, right. Yeah. This, this, so, so if you are actually a John Doyle uh, sympathizer or, or follower, take that into consideration. This is how he views you. Don't believe me? Still think the best ideas win? Okay. Why do so many people all of a sudden think that gender doesn't exist anymore? Well, no, I don't think the best ideas win every time, obviously, or we would be to the best ideas already. Um, there's institutional power behind it. That's the reason why they don't win. There's, there's conservatism and, and, and um, inertia against movement and change. Fear. So, fear. Fear is a big one. Fear, fear can... Uh, short circuit all of the, the logic and careful thinking that, that goes into coming to a position. Because the people who control the narratives told them so. People need to think for themselves, but they don't. So do you need to think for them, John? Is that what you're trying to say? We know what's right. We know what works, and we know that we need to trust ourselves. How do we know? Just trust us. To communicate that. The reason this country used to be better wasn't because of freedom and small government. Country never was better. At least not for everybody. For for like I said, for, for a select group of people, the the white straight uh, child having middle class, yes, th this country was better for a period, and has gotten worse since about the time of uh, Reaganomics. How's that for a kick in the gut of conservatism? And it's because the people for, every for everyone else, no, it is. It was never better. It was never better. It may have been more overtly oppressive, but, but to say that, that, I mean, that's the opposite of being better. Mm -hmm. So, no, it was never better for most people. <laughs> it's only gotten better, but it's still, there's still a long way to go. Controlling the narratives weren't evil yet. Like, there has always been narrative control. There always will be. It is inevitable. We have to make the choice as to whether we take action to be the ones controlling it so that we can take our country back. Plus, we have God on our side, which is epic. But God, yeah, God on our side. There's another one of those crypto-fascist little phrases that he throws out there. Um, if you studied the, the history of the Nazis, uh, you, you might have to help me since you actually know some German, but there was Gott mit uns, is mm -hmm. that God is with us, inscribed on a lot of the German uh, insignias, They're like their uniforms, their... Weapons, you know, so on and so forth. It was a common uh, Nazi phrase. God is with us. So they got God on their side. Woohoo. How does he know that? Just trust him. But that being said, here's what scares me. In order to do this successfully, it would take about a century, literally. And that's about how long it took us to get here in the first place anyways. But what that means is that the people who get the ball rolling on them... It's not been a century since the 50s, but are very likely not going to live to see the results of their work and it also means that people are going to generally have to work very hard at this and make sacrifices and there are a few pretty significant impediments that we're going to face that the communists didn't have to face at the time um, which are going to make this substantially more difficult for us first one is that our time preference and focus have been destroyed as a consequence of capitalism technology the industrial revolution etc our ability to focus like our attention span has literally been crippled by these things especially in by all these people. things popping up focus. we can't delay like you do with your videos by the with the fast talking moving new through topics really fast new stimuli new dopamine now 
And that's a huge problem because literally our biological capacity to do something like an institutional march has been compromised by the way our society has been structured. It is now less likely than it would have been a century ago for a group of people to have the requisite focus and time preference, et cetera, that is necessary for something like this to be successful. Not even as an indictment of their own character, but just because of the way society has become structured. It breeds this in people. Our society breeds mental illness, but we don't address that. Instead, we just give you your pills to make you feel like a zombie, but we're making progress, I guess, because at least Blue's Clues is pro-LGBT now. And that's a problem, too, because people are depressed. They have no motivation, no ambition. They're getting strung out on drugs. They're committing suicide. They hate themselves. And this collective spiritual illness is literally a breeding ground for leftism. I know I've explained this before, but leftism properly understood is just mass-mobilized mental illness. And I say that not as a baby boomer, like, oh, well, you guys are... Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You're not fooling anyone. These are the exact sort of things that, that, that comfortable boomers will like to say. Mass mobilized mental illness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, never going to back that up either. You, you will just make that claim and you're just supposed to trust him. Mm -hmm. That's what fascists like. You just, you just throw a bunch of stuff out there. Okay. Thank you, leader. And, and you move accordingly. They're crazy. You lost your damn minds. Literally because these people are traumatized and they project that insecurity onto these victim narratives and they crystallize them within their identity. That's why half the time... You Such irony that he's saying that. When, when he projects his entire worldview uh, onto a failing of everybody else. you ask these people to defend their political opinions, they just get emotional, they start crying. It's because it's not actually about... P oh, wow, he pulled out the, the picture of the one supposedly leftist protester screaming. They just start crying. It's not what happened to you debated actual Jake, is it? He didn't just start crying. He destroyed all your arguments. He, he left you with nothing. Wait, he cried? John didn't cry. Well, I mean, not on... on air, but he blocked him right after that point on all the different platforms. So Jake can't even <laughs> contact him. Uh, and was, he didn't call him any names. It was, it, was, it was by all accounts. Oh, sorry about that. Was it not in front? Sorry. Uh, by all accounts, it was a, a civil debate. Um, I should bring that up sometime. That was, that was, it was a pretty good debate. And, oh, John brought up things like uh, the, chim the chimera theory, where that if a man has sex with a woman that, that, that part of his sperm can uh, fuse with her DNA and cause cancer? Like, <laughs> it was just... Oh, no, it was especially anal sex. Oh, that, that's, that's right. He was talking about anal sex. So when a man uh, has, has sex with an anus, with someone's anus, that, that the sperm causes cancer by fusing with their DNA. Primary. So that's why all gay people have cancer. No, gay he thinks, men have cancer. I mean, he, he assumes that they do. He does. He, he didn't have anything to back it up then. I'm sure he doesn't have anything to back that up now. But he came up with the, these wacky theories that they were just based on nothing but feelings. And he's admitted before in previous streams that uh, why do I believe this? It's a feeling. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He thinks he thinks he's being edgy. That if he just admits that he doesn't know what he's talking about and he just feels very strongly, that that somehow you know, a hack to, to, to get through a debate and, and win it. But Politics. Is it is about spiritual sickness. And so not only are people just generally less motivated to do anything, they're also being bred to fall in line with these narratives and movements. And adjacent to this is the abandonment of God, the lack of belief what, in anything. Bred to fall in line with what, what movements? What, what the hell are you talking about? How are, they, how are people being bred to fall in line with any movement? What does that even mean? There's no way that atheism is the largest. Oh, it's from the Daily Wire, of course. Oh, he's, he's citing old Ben Shabino's uh, article. Atheism is the largest religion. We no, just it's looked. Not. Well, uh, should we pull it up again? Atheism is the largest religion. What? No, it's not. It's only 22% of people unaffiliated. 3% are actual call themselves atheists, and 4% call themselves agnostics. 15%, almost 16, uh, say nothing in particular. Nothing in particular. Um, whereas 70.6% say Christian. But atheism is the number one religion. Sure, 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 sure. Mm -hmm. 
anything greater than themselves. So given that, why would they want to dedicate themselves to taking their country back if they're not going to live to see the results? You know, like, well, what's the... What do you got there? The statistics. Yeah, 42% of Americans are, are Protestant alone. 21% are Catholic. So that so there you go. You're up over 60% between just those two denominations. Unaffiliated. Yeah, 22% are, are unaffiliated, which, I mean, he's calling atheists. That doesn't mean you're atheist just because you're unaffiliated. 1% is the atheist. Yeah. Biggest religion, though. Yeah, one is definitely bigger than 28%. And that's the or difficult 40. thing. See, see, it's taken us over two hours, almost two and a half hours, just to get to 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 even lightly fact check um, any of the things he says. It's insufferable. So if you're if you're just uncritically just kind of doing it for entertainment, you give all these facts coming at or these quote unquote facts, ideas, these, this made up bullshit that he's spouting coming at you so fast that you have no time to really even react to it, and that's part of his strategy. It's it's basically like a gish gallop. You just throw out as much stuff as you can, as fast as you can, and it, 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 it leaves your opponent, um, or his imagined opponent, no time to really react to any of it. Totally um, dazzled by your Unless you got a pause button. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, but it, that's, the, that's, that's the difficulty. It's, it's, it's so tedious, and, and it takes so much time to debunk all the crap that he's spewing out without really backing any of it up with any sort of credible source. Mm-hmm. Point. What's in it for them? That's why they humiliate you by disgracing your military, disgracing your... Wait, now you like the military again? You just said don't join the military because it's, it's, it's run by the leftists. Was, <laughs> was that not true? Did he not just say he that? Don't just join say the military? That. I just think it's funny, okay? We're disgracing the military now somehow. By what? Allowing... I, I'm, I'm sure it has something to do with allowing transgender people back in after it Trump always banned does. Them. Yeah, that's... What, what a disgrace... We can't kill as, as, as many innocent foreign civilians as, as, as we, we used to be able to because of the trans. Like, where did these thoughts even originate from? Flag, putting a clown in the White House? Because we didn't have a clown in the White House in Trump. He was, a, he was a totally serious guy who didn't have a scandal every single day of his presidency so that he could just move from scandal to scandal and never answer for anything. He didn't try an insurrection. He didn't try to push for an insurrection, that is. He, 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 he was totally credible when his more lies than there were days in office, uh, fact-checked by multiple sources. Yep. It's a humiliation. I mean, I hate, I, I don't like Biden either. He's, he's really, he's, he's fallen so short on so many of his promises. Um, but we knew that. But we, we knew that happen. going in. We just knew it wasn't going to be as bad as Trump. So, but to, but to call Biden a clown and to worship at, at Trump's feet is bizarre. The ritual. They want you to give up on your country. They want you. No, I want you to give up on trying to control other people's damn bodies and lives. Give everyone a say in their own life and a, and a, and a, and a way forward uh, to, to meet whatever potential they have. Mm-hmm. That's what I want. I don't, I don't care about you giving up on your religion you can keep your religion just fine you can keep your conservative values yeah. you can keep your conservative keep family God, you I don't care as life. long as you're not trying to stop others from living their lives as they want everyone should be able to live their lives as they see fit as long as it's not hurting people that's a pretty I think, I think that's going to be a pretty popular standard if you, if you poll people on that you to believe that it's not even worth fighting for anymore and all of these reasons are why when what? people on the right do discuss a plan to take the country back, it always Sorry, comes to did you have more to say about that? No. no, you can. No, it's okay. I want to keep going. I know you want to keep Sorry. going. Finish it up. Down to this fantasy of a moment of mass awakening. All of a sudden, the left is going to go too far. People are just going to snap out of it. Military is going to drain the swamp. Patriots in control. Trust the plan. No, none of that is going to happen. There is no big moment. There is no mass awakening. Because to awaken the masses assumes that they're capable of waking up, which they aren't. Stop fantasizing, stop coping, roll up your sleeves, get to work. The light at the end of the tunnel for us has to be the knowledge that if we do our jobs correctly, then we will have statues erected of us in our eyes. Oh, well, this is, this is his big fantasy here. Mm-hmm. Here comes his, his whole Gilead prophecy. I'm going to set everything right, and these great men of history will be have statues erected to them once again and re, re, reclaim their rightful place on top of everybody else. 
Right. And a pile of bodies, but that's beyond the point. We will be revered throughout history. Think about that. If you're watching this right now, if you manage to do your job effectively. And again, he's just tiptoeing up to that line where he's not quite advocating insurrection or, or overthrow the government, but he's getting pretty damn close. And he'll never go over it because that's his whole, whole way of keeping monetization. But it's pretty obvious what he wants. Effectively, whatever that job may be in the struggle, and enough others do the same, you will literally be elevated to the level of the founding fathers in American history a few generations from now. And that's the greatest incentive, especially for young men, assuring them that we will cement their legacy, and we will. This is why when we take power, one of the first things that we'll do is put up statues So your and legacy the is contingent upon whether or not you get a statue of yourself? I guess that's... Or get that, chiseled into the wants, size <laughs> of a, side of a rock? Yeah. He, he wants his participation trophy in the, in the next American Civil War, is what it comes down to. And unless he gets his trophy, it, it means he didn't do a good <sighs> job to hack off all the commies country of great Americans to show that we will honor their efforts and their sacrifice and that's the correct take by the way where the statues coming oh it's correct because you say so down and history being erased not history being erased because statues are gone we don't have books we don't have museums none of that stuff exists the poor German people know nothing of, of their their dark past of, of Hitler's rise to power and the Nazis because right. they've erased every statue and every insignia from the Nazi party oh it's such a tragedy they can't study their own history now it. Well, they're trying to erase our history, but they're trying to erase it because they don't want it repeating itself. They I don't want the South to rise again. I don't want the Confederacy to come back. You're right. I don't want Nazis to come back. I, I don't want us to, to put up reverent memorials to horrible people. I'm totally fine with taking all that stuff down. If you're a horrible person, like statues to individuals, kind of a, a strange thing in the first place. Like, we shouldn't be worshiping individuals. We should be looking to, we should have much more reverence for ideas and, and community and, and things that strengthen us as, as people interdependent society. on one another. Not individuals. It's, it's never, the, the, no part of history is the result of only one person. No inventor is, is completely responsible for their own inventions. They always had to have had training and, and looked at the inventions, uh, you know, back and back through time. They couldn't have done it without all those successive inventors. Same thing with any scientific discovery. Same thing with any great political revolution. It's never just one person. So it doesn't make sense to, to revere just one person or to put an entire concept into the reverence of one person. That's why there are no new ideas, just modifications of existing ideas. Well, I mean, that, that's, that's very much true. But yeah, hero worship is, is dumb. I'm just going to leave it at that. They don't want great Americans to be remembered because they don't want to inspire any more great Americans. Because I don't want more Americans to be like George Washington or um, any of the founding fathers. You're right, I don't. Um, there are very few statues that I think serve any sort of positive purpose in the world. Um, yeah, perhaps the, the, the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. Perhaps if there's any John Brown statues anywhere. I, I don't even know if there are. Um, are you familiar with John Brown at all? Uh, he was a really hardcore abolitionist. He actually led some slave revolts. He was a white man. Uh, but in, in the time that they were debating, you know, going up to the Civil War, he led a bunch of slave revolts. He actually killed a bunch of slave masters in these raids. Um, he lived his values like absolutely, and he was and he was totally venerated by history. There's one in Kansas. Oh, is there? Okay, well there Kansas you go. Kansas City, Kansas. There you go. So that might be one statue worth keeping around. But even still, let's inspire people with ideas, with with concepts, more so than than with people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm much more I'm behind that sort of thing. Because they don't want there to be an America anymore. Ugh. I don't want America to I be like wake it up is. And say. I'm so sick of this America. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. It's not funny. I mean, it is kind of funny that he thinks that they just wanted to go away. Well, he never. He's not going to explain 
what that what even that means. Right. Do we want to transform it into something better? Uh, do we want to do away with our our, our racist colonialist bent? Do we want to um, remake our government into something more egalitarian, more participatory of, of every citizen? Mm-hmm. Those could be things where, I, mean, I suppose that could be a completely different thing than what America is and still good. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just vaguely gesturing that we just want to tear everything down because apparently that's what all of us on the left do is we just want to tear down and control, tear down and control. Um, there's, there's no merit to that argument. There's no weight behind it. Mm. The greatest gift that you could give to future generations is their birthright, which frankly previous generations failed to give you, and that is the United States of... Uh, he led a number... So John Brown led a number of slaves to die for no reason. I think that the reason was their freedom, but I don't know how you can describe that as no reason, but sure, go off. Of America. Hold on, allow me to shamelessly transition into product mode. Speaking of gifts, have you Fast thought any more about no what I said about Father's Day? Oh, shoot, we're back into product placement. Hardly even noticed. There's more ties. What do we got? Oh, there's, there's his, his uh, magic bullet. Get the magic bullet if you like John. What are we up to now? Oh, we're actually to the principles, finally. So these are the things, the policies, to take back the country if you're a conservative. So pay attention, everybody. They're not going to be totally vague and worthless stuff that just means follow what John says. Take our country back, starting with number one, which is, of course, that we have to get big tech under control. And I mean seriously under control. When I talk about almost everything... Pause. Even the- Tesla. Smith & Wesson. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's not exactly big the tech. The microphone. Smith & Wesson, but, but yeah. I see your point. It's Continue. still... Sure. Tech companies. That laptop, I'm going to guess, is a Dell of some sort. Kind of looks like it, yeah. Or maybe it's a Mac, but still. S- that's some tech. kind of big tech, yeah. So, all the, right. The, can... plat- the platform that makes him his money, YouTube. Right. Um, basically, he just doesn't want anyone to ever be canceled for saying anything. They can be, be as insightful as they want to violence, they can uh, peddle false medical claims all they want and he doesn't want them to ever be censored because censorship is bad uh, unless you're a leftist then he's all for censorship mm-hmm. he, he like he literally started the video talking about wanting to get all of all of the the so-called woke ideology out of classrooms mm-hmm. okay so that sort of censorship cool for john this sort of censorship where you violate even the terms of service not so cool the most hard-hitting, take-no-BS concern. Yeah, telling slaves to die for freedom, white man tells field slaves to hold pikes, pike, pikes against the muskets of the army. He is the original wannabe white savior. Well, okay, you don't, you don't have to like him. That's fine. Again, let's, let's have more reverence for concepts and ideas more so than people. So that, that's fair. I, I have no special love for. Uh, I have no special love for the, the figure of John Brown. Uh, it just seemed cool to me that he he actually did what he wanted to and killed slave masters. Uh, uh, hello to you too, <laughs> Angus McKilly. Um, assuming you just joined the conversation, we're talking about. John Doyle's new video, he does the Hack Off Kami show on YouTube. He's trying to tell conservatives how to take back their country. Um, and we are critiquing it from a leftist perspective. Conservatives do as just performative. It really is true, especially on issues like big tech, which is one of the most important. So we hear about Republicans take action against big tech, epic win, libs triggered, libs on suicide watch. I'm drinking my leftist tears. And you actually look at like what they're doing, the action, like what the action is. Uh, it's legally defining what a social media company is and then saying that if, well, they ban you, well, they have to let you know about it. So I'll lay out some. Yeah, those, that, that, that's called internet regulation. That's what the government has to do. They have to define what a, what a co- tech company is. They have to define whether it is itself a media company uh, and has to then therefore be responsible for all of the content that all of its users post. 
and immediately take them down if, if it's in any sort of violation. Um, or they're a, a social media platform. So, I mean, it has to be defined one way or another. That's, that's, yeah, that's a legal question. Some additional things that should be done legally, and then I'll explain why. In addition to just legally defining what a social media company is and mandating that they notify a user when they're banned, how about this? All constitutional free speech is protected on all platforms. Most people that are getting banned are doing so for things like inciting violence, uh, being threatening people, not even necessarily being racist. I mean, sure, there's some, there's some okay, different well. platforms like, like on, on, on Twitch, for example, you can't say certain words. That's mm -hmm. pretty mild censorship. It's just, it's just about words. You can still talk about all the same concepts. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, sure, fine. You want people to be able to say the N word is, is I guess, where, what he's getting at and, and get away with it. Cool. That's a real noble fight there, John. Any platform who censors, shadow bans, or deplatforms someone for constitutional speech will pay a very... Mm, and then deplatforms. And, and you're getting into to the government regulating who a business can and cannot do business with. Uh, saying that a business can't decide to end a partnership, say, with a, with a content creator like John because of the things he says. That gets into kind of a murky area, though, doesn't it? I mean, you're, you're then tying the hands of, of all these companies who will be forced to let on people that do terrible things, and they'll have nothing that they can do about it. Um, it'd be kind of the 4 of of all of social media. Um, that doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Very large fine each time they do it. Let's say a million dollars to screw these people. An additional... YouTube would be out of business and so would you. But okay. All previously banned candidates, independent journalists, activists, etc. must be reinstated unless the company can prove that their speech wasn't constitutional. And this would also protect current users who haven't been affected yet from the same treatment. Moreover, expand this not only into social media platforms, also internet service providers, telecommunications companies, so that they can't do this anymore either. That but fine, you, you, you want to federalize uh, the, the online discourse, treat it as though it is the public square, um, and have the same rules apply. I mean, you're, you're not going to be happy with the results of that either, because that's just having... I mean, for one thing, I don't know how you're going to feel about having more government control over speech, because then you're going to have to set up all sorts of... of government agencies who are then monitoring all this speech and all this communication. Nothing could go wrong there, could it? Um, they would never overreach uh, and listen to speech that they shouldn't be listening to, would they? Um, you're also talking about actual legal consequences for people that violate free speech laws. Uh, not just getting deplatformed or, or getting kicked off or their, their account demonetized, but possibly going to jail and stuff like that. I mean, if that's, the, if that's the route you want to go, I guess there's an argument to be made that, that this, is, this does function like a, uh, a town square, so to speak, and that people should be held to those standards. Also, that would be the end of any sort of anonymous user account or any sort of duplicate accounts, because you can't duplicate yourself in the public square, can you? You can't m misrepresent yourself as another person. Um, Oh, thanks for being on the, the stream. I can't get out of here. <laughs> here you go. Thanks. Thanks for being on the stream. And mm -hmm. hope you'll join in future episodes. All right. Getting back to it. Um, so yeah, if, if that's the, the route that he wants to go, there's going to be unforeseen consequences that he's probably not going to like, which, which is going to include a whole lot more government control over these social media platforms. Um, but okay. Let's, uh, let's get back to it. That's basically the idea. We would effectively be guaranteeing First Amendment rights on the Internet, which is the new public square. Oh, but John, if you expand your rights to include the Internet, then eventually the government will use that power to take rights away, even though that's incoherent, completely. 
because any part, any any realm that the government has been given entry into, they have never taken people's rights away. That's completely incoherent. Um, look at how Donald Trump used Homeland Security in a way that had not been used before. The Homeland Security troops to disappear activists over the the summer of, of last year. Um, the idea that the government's just going to be a, a benevolent actor, no matter what, I think is a bit of a suspect position. Especially if you assume that the entire government is communist and, and you're against that, that, that none of this makes sense. It's not flowing together in any logical way. If you think the government's communist, which, which, which you believe to be a bad thing, but you want them to have more control over your speech, uh, where they can legally act in ways that they can't now because we're, we're talking about private companies uh, and their own regulations. And you're just going to trust that everything's going to go okay. I don't follow that argument. Completely. There is literally no way for expanding First Amendment rights on the internet to come back to bite us. Like, sure, maybe... Because forums like 8chan didn't lead to mass shooters posting their manifesto, saying what they're going to do to go kill all these people, and then doing it. Free speech can never come back to bite us, can it? It's a sort of free speech absolutism that, that, that is completely brain dead. It doesn't take any real world ramifications into, into account. It makes life a little bit harder in Silicon Valley, but they'll adjust. Remember, they're innovators. They'll be just fine without deciding who gets... Why is Ted Cruz part of, of this picture? How is he part of Silicon Valley? Or Silicon Valley in any way? I, I get that Mark Zuckerberg is, but bizarre. It's to have an opinion. Bizarre and choice. And you can do this at the opinion. state level right now. Just call your people, organize, put pressure <laughs> on them. We'll put out a script at some point for all of these probably that you guys can use. We'll organize more in the future. But this is absolutely imperative for our future success because like we said, these platforms are the new public square and we are being targeted so severely that if we don't use what little power we have left to guarantee ourselves a seat at the table. And again, he never, he never qualifies how he's being targeted. Has he been personally deplatformed? No. Not from anything. Oh, Twitter. He got kicked off Twitter for doxing people. That's right. That's probably what he's mad about all this time, is that he got kicked off Twitter because he published the home addresses of, of people that were, I don't, I don't remember what they were involved with, but they, they had nothing to do with, he had no reason to go ahead and, and dox these people, but he did it anyway in, in violation of their terms of service. I can't imagine that going any differently if, if the government was in control of that. You can't just publish people's personal information in a public square. You couldn't go to, to a message board in a coffee shop and say, so-and-so lives here, this is her address and phone number. Um, and by the way, they're dirty communists and, and you should hate them. That wouldn't, that wouldn't fly. That would be considered harassment, uh, almost certainly, um, if not stalking. But I'm, I'm really having trouble seeing how this world is that he's going to <laughs> enact or wants to enact would actually function table then we're just going to be deleted from society and we will have no chance of turning the tide let alone taking our country back so we have to go after big tech but we have to do so with teeth with balls because that's all these people respond to. what does that mean how do you go after it with teeth and balls i mean you, you show a picture of someone taming a lion that doesn't really say any sort of a any sort of a strategy, any, any sort of tactics that you wish to be employed. Um, that doesn't mean anything. Force. We're the ones who will be placated by a performative display that is ultimately inconsequential. Oh, we totally owned him by asking him that question. These companies need to be met with force or else we will all be screwed, blued, and tattooed. A completely made up phrase. Don't think I'll even bother going. Oh, wait, uh, blued. Oh, that must mean blue haired. Is that, is that the... A reference to, to SJWs. You're going to end up being the SJWs. That's, uh, that'd be tragic, wouldn't it? Moving on to the second one. Probably the most peculiar on the list, but just as important. We need to ban poison from being put in our bodies. Here's a fact I'm not sure if you know. On average... <laughs> just apropos of nothing you said up to this point, but I, I guess all of a sudden he's, he's worried about stuff in the water that, that turned the freaking frogs gay. Um... 
average every week, you are ingesting one credit card's worth of plastic. Testosterone is down 40% in the last four decades. That's down 1% every year. Male sperm count is expected... And I guess he doesn't actually care about the free market because he's, he's happy having a heavy-handed government intervene whenever it suits his uh, social agenda. So I guess that's not too surprising that he wants this sort of thing. But it's, it's, it, it's coming up. I've, I've watched the video through already, but it's a interesting reason... <laughs> To say the least. Expected to reach zero by 2045, we're becoming a sick, confused, androgynous society in a large part. Yeah, he even put it behind his own banner, uh, which I doubt was. Sperm counts could reach zero by 2045 everywhere, everywhere. Plastic toxins behind fertility, a bunch of stuff that's essentially redacted by his own funny sweat man was right sign and then survival. Um, no citation that's visible. It's just, it's just, it's just a scare tactic, basically. Zero by 2045, we're becoming a sick, confused, androgynous society, and a large part of that is the fact that we're ingesting microplastics, BPAs, phthalates, phytoestrogens, etc., etc. Everyone wants to point and laugh. Ha ha, funny sweat man says frogs are gay. No one wants to talk about the effects of atrazine on studies of South African claw frogs, how it made them effeminate. People are not frogs. How it made the males start trying to mate with other males. How it and made them. I would like to see that study. He's not going to show it. it. Made them disinterested in the females. No one wants to talk about that. These chemicals, and there are lots of them, are used in your food packaging, in the plastics that you use to store your food, in the cups and bottles out of which you drink. They're in your shampoos, in your toothpastes, they're in the tap water, they're in the meats, eggs, milk. They're getting into your system in more ways than we know, and we need to outright ban them. The great thing about the market breeding innovation... What, what the hell was that graphic? 32,000 pieces of microplastic? That was had nothing. He didn't say that statistic. That's apropos of nothing is that when we ban things that disrupt the collective endocrine systems of the country that literally make men more feminine that are yeah so here's the here's the big conspiracy the companies whether intentionally or not are putting these these products in the water that are turning people more effeminate which leads them to be leftists of course because only effeminate people are leftists there's no mask presenting or or uh, people with any stereotypical mask characteristics on the left it's all owned by the, the right, which is small, but also large. Um, so small that it's going to be crushed. Also so large that it's inevitable to take back its power soon. And it's just a lot of incoherent nonsense. They're actively lowering their testosterone levels. The good thing is that it'll just innovate a new solution that isn't altering our hormones. But this isn't... You don't know that it's alternating humans' hormones in any way. A frog study doesn't prove anything about humans. That's the best you got? incredibly important because disrupting your endocrine system makes you unstable it makes you mentally ill and it also makes mentally ill so that that was not a claim that that he had talked about from even the study the one study he vaguely gestured at how does it make you mentally ill makes you more feminine oh so being more feminine makes you mentally ill or you are more mentally ill and that causes you to be more feminine all of these things make you more likely to support the left yep there it is that's the grand conspiracy. That's, that's how come there's been a rise of communism, a rise of leftist ideas. It couldn't be because of material conditions. It couldn't be because millennials have a tiny fraction of the wealth that, that um, their previous generations had at our same age. You know, I'm, on, I'm on the older end of the millennial scale. I'm, I'm almost 40, be 40 in a couple of years. Uh, and, and people in, you know, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to find that, that statistic at some point, but we own something like 4% of the world's wealth. And, and if you take out Mark Zuckerberg alone, millennials have about, uh, he, or he alone owns like 2% of millennial wealth. I think that's how it broke down. And then Gen X at, at 40 had about 7% of the world's wealth. Um, and then the boomers had something more like uh, 20%, 15 to 20%, if I remember right, of the world's wealth at age 40. Couldn't be because of that. Couldn't be because of a, a decline in, in um, you know, wages adjusted for inflation. Uh, the, the idea that the, the minimum wage has been stagnant for the last 20 years. Couldn't be because of that. 
Uh, couldn't be because of any of these. No, I see that was just a live notification. Uh, couldn't be because of any of these these sorts of forces at work um, that millennials are just less and less likely to have the same sort of life that, that their parents or, or the generation before their parents had. Um, couldn't be because of a decline in, in unions, which, which gave workers less and less rights since the, the age of Reagan and Thatcher. None of those could be causes. It has to be plastics in the water, feminizing people. Because, he, because that's what he feels, and you should trust him because he feels that support the narratives, the systems of power in this country, all of it. If you want a free, prosperous, happy society. And also as though there are no conservative women, like are, are conservative women just not as, as feminine in his mind? Are they more masculine? And that's what makes them more uh, trend towards conservatism? Like where, how does this line up? Like I can see how he could make the, the really stupid claim that uh, if you are a man and, and you're a leftist, you are more feminine. Because in his mind, feminine is, is bad. Um, but wouldn't the opposite then be true of, of women on, on the right? Wouldn't they be more masculine then? Is that what he's claiming? I seriously doubt it. I, I don't think he, I mean, when he talks about the, you know, the idea of a trad wife or whatever, that's someone who is... is, is stereotypically feminine, we you know, only wears dresses, always has their makeup on, always has dinner ready, is a homemaker, primary job to be raising of children, which is a fine lifestyle to have. Got no problem with that. Uh, JJ416, thank you very much for the follow. Um, we are talking about John Doyle and his new video, the five new conservative policies to take our country back, and we are critiquing it from a leftist perspective. So I hope you're interested in that sort of thing. Um, anyway, like, but he's saying it so fast that if you don't pause every few seconds, you're going to miss these little bits and, and perhaps absorb them into your, your uh, worldview um, just because they're coming at you faster than you can really process them. But it, do, it doesn't make sense. You just, all you have to do is you stop for a little bit and you, you analyze what he's saying and, and the entire logic of it just breaks down. And you must understand that the mass alteration of your people's hormones is not conducive to that. It makes them weak. It makes them emotional. So we're weak, more effeminate, and more emotional, yet somehow we're crushing the right and taking over the entire country. It's always the line of the fascist that, that your enemy is simultaneously weak, degenerate, uh, not fit to be called human, um, feminine, uh, all these, these other ways they use uh, being more feminine as, as a pejorative, um, less worthy in every single way, and yet somehow are, are simultaneously weak, but crushing the right and a serious threat to traditional values. How do these things line up? How do, these, how do you hold these two ideas in your brain at the same time? You can't have both a strong and a weak enemy at the same time if they're the same people you're talking about. You got to pick at least one. Um, I would never say that the, 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 the right is, is weak in any way. They, they, they may be losing a grip on power as, as um, that's more of a, a, a function of urbanization in, in the U.S. anyway than it is anything else. As, as people move to the cities, they get exposed to more ideas. They, they tend to become more liberal. That's just that's just how things naturally happen. If you're out in the country, you're exposed to less ideas. Even if you're on the internet all the time, is, there's a difference between that and, and interacting one-on-one -on -one with a person right in front of you. Um, and also you have the influence of the people you see every day, your family, who themselves have, have grown up with, with conservative ideas. It's not a judgment or anything, that just tends to be how things shake out. The more rural you are, the more likely you are to be conservative, the more urban you are, the more likely you are to be on the, at least the liberal end, if, if not even the leftist end. Um, uh, so you love dunking on, on John Doyle as well. I do too, and I, I kind of missed his last few months where he wasn't putting anything out to, to even talk about. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a good time. I hope you enjoy the program. Um, so yeah, so, so the idea that, that we're getting more liberal for any other reason than we're getting more urban, um, and also the, the, the material conditions are not supporting 
people to maintain um, the sort of lifestyle that their parents had, well, and that's also causing them to walk away from conservatism and, and, and reject it as, as a viable way to get the things you want in your life. Um, again, not, not a judgment. It just, just happens to be the way that, that things tend to go. Um, if, if you don't like how things are, you're tending to want change. If you want change, you're tending to be more liberal or progressive. Uh, if you do like the way things are, you're going to tend to be more conservative because you like how things are. That's, it's, and it's pretty, pretty easy cause and effect. Um, but no, John has to put it this, this whole elaborate scheme up where plastics are causing us to be more feminine, which causes us to be more leftist. It, it doesn't track. Emotional, it makes them depressed, and it is evil. And arguably... Plastics are evil. You heard it, you heard it here first. <laughs> plastics are evil. Um, and more emotional, as, as though just being emotional... Like, the irony, too, of, of John Doyle accusing anyone of being emotional when he has said on at least one occasion that he believes something very strongly because that's just how he feels. And he didn't, he didn't ever go back and correct that. He didn't wink at the camera. He didn't do anything. He just said, why do I feel this? Feelings. You know, yeah, that's it. And he just moved along. Um, so ironic that, that he's now accusing other people of being emotional and that being a bad thing. As, as, as though also just shutting down all your emotions is, is a preferable way to, to be in society. We want to just have a society of, of, of emotionless automatons that, that work and, and don't complain and, and that's it. I, I guess that's the world that, that he wants instead. That's why it's allowed to happen and why it's swept under the rug. And this isn't a conspiracy theory, by the way. Literally, just Google it. It's all public. Oh, just Google it. Just Google it, everybody. Google will always bring you... Uh, credible results, by the way. It will, it will never lead you astray. The algorithm is infallible. Uh, Google, Google <laughs> plastic turning frogs gay and, and people gay. I'm sure you'll come up with some real top-notch research. Publicly available information. It's on the labels. They don't even try Oh, it's on the labels. May, may turn you gay, may turn you effeminate. Okay, cool. Haven't seen those ones. The highest. It's just true and no one talks about it. But anyways, moving on to number three. Yep, just move along. Don't, don't actually back that up with anything. Just move along. This one's probably going to be the most polarizing, but it's just so true. That is that we need an immigration moratorium. Oh, that's going to be so polarizing. Who, who on the right is, 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 is not going to have strong opinions on both sides of, of the immigration debate. That's it's so polarizing. Um, that's ridiculous. Everyone on the right wants things to stay as they are. That's what being a conservative is. So you don't want more people to come in. That's just a function of it. Um, you may dress that up in, 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 in uh, more noble language of, of like uh, wanting to protect jobs or any other such nonsense, ignoring that immigrants over the, the generations always produce more jobs than, than they take. But beyond that, um, yeah, no conservative is gonna think that's uh, a controversial stance. They don't, they don't ever want to lose an election again. Uh, and, they, and they know they're on the, the, the tipping point um, where they're going to lose elections if they don't keep things structurally in their favor through gerrymandering, uh, through the Electoral College, through the, the United States Senate. Um, so they're, <laughs> instead of addressing their own policies and trying to make them more appealing to people that are not white, they want to just shut the borders on everyone and keep things, and just put the, put the whole country under glass. That ought to do it. Um, it's astonishing. To, it, it, it's, it, it, I can't think of a good analogy for it right now, but it just, it boggles the mind how that's somehow more a tenable position to just close it off to everyone than to change your policies to make them more appealing. For those unfamiliar, an immigration moratorium means that we don't take in on the net any immigrants for a period of, let's say, 10 years. Before I explain... If we did that, our population in the United States would dwindle. Uh, we would have decreased productivity. Our, our birth rate overall in the U.S. is, is less than replacement levels. Um, maybe he thinks that by banning plastic at the same time, that's going to turn around, but no. The reason that there, our birth rates are below replacement levels is because we are as a nation, pretty well-educated. Uh, and, and no factor has been more 
correlated to population control than education and specifically education of women. Um, that's the reason that we are not at replacement levels. That's the reason that, that immigration is the only reason we even keep our population levels and, and have them continue to rise. Uh, because as, as the immigrants come and, and they start to assimilate in, in one way or another into the economy, uh, they tend to become more educated. They tend to have less children than they would. And, and also, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I think that's, that pretty well covers it, actually. Why? Let me just preface by reminding you that immigration in the way that we have it now is the greatest gift and weapon that the left has ever been given. The only reason... I mean, he's not exactly wrong. The, the immigration does tend to benefit the left. Um, not in the first generation, though. The first generation of immigrants tend to be very grateful and, and super patriotic to the country that, that accepted them in, especially if they're refugees. They tend to be more conservative. But as people go along through generations, they do tend to get more liberal, especially if they've been re relocated to an urban area. Um, that just, as, as, as we discussed, being in an urban area just tends to make people more liberal. Um, no grand conspiracy there. It's just how things tend to happen when there's greater flow of information and greater different uh, diversity of people around you. You can actually talk to, to people in the flesh who are not like you, who come from different places. You can see that they're not as scary as, as you may have assumed. Um, but yeah, let's, let's hear John's explanation for it. That it is supported by the left is because they know that they can simply import with so yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's saying that it, it it supports the left. Yeah, it absolutely does. And also because, you know, when he, he when he talks about the left, I'm sure he's lumping Democrats into that. I don't consider that the left. Um, vid's a bit quiet. All right, let's let's bump up the volume on the vid just a little bit. Sorry about that. We will uh, bump it up. Anyway, uh, so what was I saying? Um, so yeah, it does benefit the left because, as I said, uh, the Democrats, and, and I don't even consider them a left, but, but the left is he's using it. The Democrats will at least pander to, to policies that uh, benefit immigrants. Um, things like uh, deferred action for childhood arrivals, the DACA program. That was, that was a Democratic program. Um, they will at least make noise towards, towards helping immigrants and, and helping non-white people. That's not to say they always govern that way, because most of the time they don't really govern all that much at all. Um, they, they promise things and then come up with excuses why they can't fulfill them. It's, it, it's always either the right or a couple of stubborn Democrats who won't change their positions. It's, it's funny how often that, that comes to be the case. Um, so, but, but in general... Um, immigrants are going to tend to, at least in, in subsequent generations, are going to tend to vote more liberally, just as a, as a facet of, of where they live and, and who panders to them. They're going to they're gonna vote for Democrats more often. Again, the, right, uh, the, the, the Republicans could just change their policies and try to become more attractive to immigrants, but apparently that's a bridge too far. Um, So yeah, I, I guess the, the alternative is to just shut the door on everyone's face, because that's going to go well. Voters to make the right electorally obsolete. And unfortunately, the right supports it too, because they get paid off by big... The right would be obsolete if not for these structural things like gerrymandering and... Uh, oh, geopastique. Uh, or is it gopastique? I can't remember. Uh, how are you, friend? Um, everyone, please follow uh, Geo Pastique. Or is it, is it Go Pastique? Because I remember you had the connection to the game Go, if I'm right. Uh, yeah, go follow his channel. He's a, a uh, Frenchman who lives in Texas, I believe, and talks about leftist stuff um, pretty much every day. Really great channel. So go check him out. Um, I'm doing well. I'm just talking about uh, John Doyle's new video. Uh, we were slogging through that. We're having to pause about every five seconds because he just comes up with a new lie or deception about at about that rate. It's, 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 it's incredible how much he packs in. That's just misinformation, vague uh, fear mongering or, or some other form of, of deception in, in uh, it's only a half hour video. It's like 35 minutes long. We've got through almost 25 minutes of it in three hours. 
So, uh, so yeah. Business, uh, because mass oh, go pasty. Thank you for the follow. Anyways, there oh, you're raiding. Wrong. Very good. A party of six. Welcome in, raiders. Um, I, I am Zach. I, I do the, the uh, Bread Theory channel, if you're um, unfamiliar. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Go Pastique. Um, very much for your uh, raid. Uh, so generally I talk about theory. I do that every Friday where I, I do a chapter of an audiobook. Uh, right now we're going through The Conquest of Bread by Peter Kropotkin. Um, uh, thank you for the, the follow Bread Crochets. Thank you very much. Uh, so anyway, uh, right now we're going through The Conquest of Bread by Peter Kropotkin every Friday night at about 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. And then on the, on the weekends, on Sundays, I, I like to tend to keep the things lighter. Uh, right now we're going through John Doyle's video on uh, five new conservative policies to take our country back. And we are critiquing it from a leftist perspective. Uh, my wife was on earlier. Um, she had some stuff she had to go do, but uh, I'm... I'm taking the reins here and uh we're just gonna keep trudging along through this video so i hope you like what you see i, I hope you uh follow um and yeah welcome in very good with opposing something because it will hurt you politically especially because the only reason that they support it is because it will help them politically and not only help when someone said earlier that the, the audio was a bit soft i don't know if they were referring to the microphone or the video itself but uh just let me know if the levels are are um, difficult to keep up with for whatever reason them but cement victory for them and I'll probably do a whole video on just this topic in the future let me know if you want to see that but for now what I'll say is this much of the immigration pitch in this country appeals to the Patriots ego and even Ronald Reagan was guilty of this we hear this rhetoric how these people just want to come to America because it's just the greatest country in the world and it's the land I mean they they probably often want to come here because it's it's a better situation than where, wherever they're fleeing from that often is the case uh especially when you're talking about refugees that that yeah maybe not the best country in the world even in their minds but but definitely a place where they're going to face less uh, whatever it is gang violence uh, political repression what whatever it is that they they ha they happen to be fleeing so yeah that that definitely is the case with a, with a lot of immigrants uh, or just better economic opportunity um a lot of immigrants come from places that, that just don't have as robust of an economy and, and maybe not uh, the jobs that they're, they're looking for. They, they, they look at it as an opportunity. Um, and an interesting note, too, um, I know, I know this, this used to be the case, but I wouldn't be surprised if it still is, that a lot of immigrants, once they've, they've especially if they're coming in for education, once they, they finish their education, they, they often will either uh, work a job and send money home or, or just go back to their, their home country. So it's not, it's not as though immigration is always a, a permanent thing either, as is he's making it out to be. But just a little side note. <laughs> What's wrong with his face? Uh, I, I, I think it's just uh, his ideology manifesting in his facial expression, expressions, uh, to be honest. Boys that young don't grow beards yet. <laughs> Yeah, he's only like uh, 21, 22 years old. I think he, I think maybe just even turned 21. Um, such boomer energy for such a, a, a young guy. It's really, it's really sad to see uh, someone so young taking up such reactionary positions. Because he's, he's basically a fascist. He will never come out and use that word. He will never uh, specifically say any, any one minority needs to be uh, done away with. Uh, but he loves hearkening back to especially the U.S. 1950s. Uh, he loves talking about how the uh, traditional values of, of, of white uh, cis het men are, are being assaulted. Oh, Christian as well. Shouldn't, shouldn't uh, pull that in or shouldn't leave that out, I should say. Um, yeah, he, he's, he's a, a fascist and all but, but, but um, personal branding. Um, but I would consider him to be such. He, he has no problem with government control as long as it is pushing his particular political agenda. He doesn't care. He, he, will, uh, he will pause on free speech and, and pretend to support it only to turn around and say, well, we also need to get all of this education out of the classroom because it's liberal. Just, just because it's liberal, just because it opposes him, not even for any um, grander purpose. Like he, he doesn't say it's bad education or anything. It's just that it, it opposes him politically in his mind. Uh, so he's got no problem with control um, as long as it's towards uh, keeping him and his kind in power, basically. 
land of opportunity and it makes us feel like maybe we still are a great country. And I'm sure a lot of these immigrants who do come here, they absolutely believe that that's the case. And I love that. I sympathize with them. But unfortunately, yet obviously, we have to prioritize the needs of our country and our people. And the reality of the situation is that these immigrants are not assimilating and they're taking with no evidence. Um, the thing of it is, you, you look at the way that uh, that immigrations go throughout the generations. Um, perhaps the, 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 the first group of people, the, the, I don't know if you even call that first generation, but the, the people that do the immigration first, bringing their kids along, oftentimes their kids will speak um, the language, if it, if it happens to be a different language that they come from, than English. But then you look just uh, the, the second or third generation, and by that time, almost 100%, they've lost the language, or, or all but lost the language. Assimilation is, is, is a fact, and it, it can be a sad fact as well. You know, we're losing a lot of, of different perspectives by people not keeping up with, with uh, the, the various ideas that the, their family had brought with them, um, which is one of the things that, that I think is, is actually good about the U.S., is that we have all these different ideas coming in uh, from different places. Nazis don't deserve good mics. That's, <laughs> that's a good point. And that's, that's something I've been wondering about this entire time. John Doyle has just under 40,000 subscribers. As far as I know, he only does YouTube. He may be on some of the more obscure conservative platforms, but I don't see how that's even enough to make a living on, to have all this nice equipment. He just moved across the country. Um, where is his money even coming from? Like he has a couple of sponsors for some obscure, you know, like gun fetish products. I can't imagine that's pulling in more than a couple hundred dollars uh, a month. Um, so where is, how does he get money to have this, this nice studio, this nice microphone, all, you know, as far as I know, he doesn't work another job. And the only job that I've ever heard of him working at was a subway. Um, that's it. Like, like you don't make this, you don't make this kind of a studio on subway money. Uh, the only reason I've been able to get any of the stuff I had was by <laughs> basically getting it for Christmas from various family members. I, I haven't purchased most of, of the equipment that I've even had uh, available to me to stream. So it's kind of bizarre. It makes you wonder. I know there's, there's a, a similar sized um, YouTuber and, and Twitch streamer, um, Hannah Reloaded, which you all should check out as well. Hannah Reloaded. Great, great channel. Um, and she has about 40,000 subscribers as well. She doesn't make most of her money on YouTube, uh, only a very small fraction. Most of it comes from Twitch, from direct donations and subscribers and stuff like that. So that he somehow is surviving off all this makes me think that he's being bankrolled by somebody else, whether it's his parents, whether it's some sort of conservative donors that, that he has set up, I don't really know. Oh man, I appreciate all the comments coming in as well. I'll try to get to as many as I can. Uh, this Doyle, so, so Ali Osher, hello, Ali Osher, go follow Ali Osher as well. Another excellent, uh, top tier, uh, leftist creator. Um, this Doyle trying to be a younger crowder. Yeah. You know, he does, he changed his look. He had that, uh, MAGA hat. He was always proud of his MAGA hat. He was like, the MAGA hat doesn't come off. It was like his rallying cry all through the, the, the recounts and the, the election stuff. Um, and now that he's at his new studio, no mention of the MAGA hat. It's just gone. He's, he's changed his look. He used to wear suits. Now he's dressing more like a boogaloo boy, I would have to say. Uh, he's got the scruffy beard. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he's, he's definitely trying to reposition his brand a little bit. <laughs> Crowder is a clown. Doyle is a LARPer. Absolutely a LARPer. I've mentioned this earlier in the stream, too, how every single element of his intro, whether it be the classic car, uh, the wife, the kid... Um, the, even, even down to his, his, his dumb fedora, he doesn't actually have any of those things in real life. He's not married. He certainly doesn't have that car that I'm aware of. Uh, he doesn't have any kids. All of this stuff that he is telling every other person that they need to go out and pursue, almost none of it he has. He, he may have his own place, but I, I, I severely suspect that, that he's being bankrolled by someone else. He's not bringing it in off his, his own effort. Uh, rich parents. Yeah, I'd say that's, that's, that's probably why it, what it is. And, he, and, uh, JJ416 also says that's why he has no empathy. That's, that's probably true. He seems to have grown up in a very privileged life. Um, which is something that we should all be so lucky to, to, to never have to worry about, uh, any sort of insecurity to, to, um, 
ostensibly have a, a good home life, that, that's something that everyone is deserving of. So we shouldn't resent him for that. But at the same time, it's really unfortunate that that's made him <laughs> such a chud, really. Um, anyone support, who supports Trump is a horrible uh, idea. Trump lost and continues to lose. That's absolutely true. Um, I wonder what you all think about the, the prospect of him running. I, I just heard that he was going to run for, uh, I don't know, I don't think it was a Senate seat. I think it was a congressional seat uh, with the idea of trying to uh, impeach <laughs> Biden. I think that's his latest uh, harebrained scheme. Um, the future is mail. Yeah, I know. He had to, he had to find a, a, a sign and scratch out the fee in mail. So he, he's, he's literally erasing females. That, that, that's his big own of women because he obviously hates them. Ah, so another, another Hannah fan. Great. Hannah's a wonderful creator. I, I always love her stuff, especially her Tinfoil Tuesday segments. Amazing. I don't know where she gets these people from, but go check that out. Uh, um, Hannah Reloaded. She does this Tinfoil Tuesday every Tuesday where she, she brings up different conspiracy theorists and just roasts them. And she's a master at it. Um, yeah, all right. Yeah, you're welcome for the, the shout out, Alyosha. I really do enjoy your content. Um, let's see. Uh, Trump is still on Doyle's website. That's really sad. <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, I have not looked that deeply into the Doyle brand to, to know that myself. <laughs> Ooh, that's a, that's a bit of a, a blue one. Watch him get, um, not a word I'm going to say, at Pride one time and watch him get turned out. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm not going to finish that sentence there. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, it's, it's, it's bizarre. And, and he blames the entire world for him not having a wife and children. He's, he keeps talking about how I want to raise a child in this society, but the left won't let me and all this stuff. And it's just like, how can you go ahead and blame everybody else for, for, for your failings? But every time you see, say, a trans person and they say that they're not being treated well or a person of color and they say they're not being treated well by society, oh, that can't be a systemic thing. That has to be their personal failings. It, it doesn't make sense. He just so badly wants to be the victim, though, that uh, he'll do anything he can to, to twist that, that pretzel of, of logic. Oh, I'm sorry, Alyosha. I, I don't allow uh, website links in the chat. Uh, I think you can probably still whisper it to me if, if you want. Um, but just because it's just me, I don't have any, any sort of producer or anything else. I, I can't keep up if I get a bunch of spammers in here. And I want to protect uh, my community from potentially dangerous websites. So I appreciate you trying to, to share that, though. Uh, all right. Well, I think we can, uh, we can move on. Thank you so much for, for all the comments. Keep them coming. Yeah, there's absolutely no consistency in the right. Um, he will say one thing and say the exact opposite, but he said it so fast that I think I, I get the feeling that his, his viewers and his listeners just don't even keep up. It just, it just kind of hits them all, and they just absorb it all because the, for whatever reason, they find his personality enjoyable. Um, it's a bizarre thing, but, but yeah, no logical consistency, especially with Doyle. He's, he's, he's kind of the cream of the crop when it comes to logical inconsistency, but then at the same time, thinking you are absolutely right about everything you say. More money out of the system than they put into it. The typical right-wing line is, well, I like legal immigration. What I don't like is illegal immigration. And then the elites are like, oh, I mean, okay, we'll just do it that way then. Think about it. What difference does it make if you get a thousand people from El Salvador, Somalia, wherever, you get a thousand of them at the border, what difference does it make if they run past the entrance or go through it? Seriously, what is the effective difference? A majority of both legal and illegal immigrant households are on welfare. There it is. The, 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 the dirty, quote unquote, poor uh, immigrants are going to flood into our nice white country and they're just going to destroy it all. That's, that's his basic thesis here. Um, it has nothing to do with reality. You, you look at, 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 again, at immigrant uh, immigration statistics and generationally, they will continue to add more and more jobs than if they hadn't been here, if they hadn't come here in the first place. So that's wrong. Uh, and where, where is this cited from? He just says welfare use by immigrant and native households, uh, an analysis of Medicaid, cash, uh, food, and housing programs. No citation, just, just a banner that, that asserts that. 
So that's about as, as much stock as you should put into that sort of thing. Uh, he's talking out of his ass. He has, he has absolutely nothing to back that up. Okay. All right. I, I will take a look at that, Alyosha, later on. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's funny. Actually, oh, you know what? Maybe I will bring that up. But I'll, I'll bring it up at the end. We'll, we'll, we'll do that at the end of the, the broadcast here. So he'll do this, and he'll just he'll flash this, this little assertion up on the screen, and then real quick just bring it back before you even have time to so see what's being said. Maybe a lot of nope, who gone really again. Just there you go. Make it for themselves in this country. The majority of them seem to want to loot a decay. Loot? Where does loot come from? None of his statistics talked about looting. He's just, he's just hoping that you as a viewer will make the, the connection that if you're on welfare, you're probably also a looter. Um, and this, where is this? Where is this being filmed at? The, this group of people who just appear to be protesting? Are these looters? There's no context here. He's just throwing it up there, hoping you'll make the connection. Yeah, every state has citizenship rules as well. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. So. Oh. So this is this is from uh, DW, which is a uh, Deutsche Welle. It's a it's a German um, news organization, but it doesn't say where it's being filmed. It doesn't say who these people are. This is all just to make you scared, and he won't even put it up on screen long enough to really uh, absorb what's what's being shown. It just want, he just wants you to react, react, react. That's what he's all about. Paying empire undergoing its managed decline. Oh, but they helped the joke. Oh, wait, wait. It had it just at the, be at the end there. Let me, let me back up. It was just, it's amazing the way he does this. Uh, just had it at the end so of that So it seems one. that while there may be no, a lot of them who, you know, really just want to make it for themselves in this country, the majority of them seem to want to loot a decaying empire undergoing its managed decline. There. Okay. It just says report by Thomas Amter, DW News. Apropos of nothing, um, judging by the vehicles in the picture, it does not appear to be anywhere in the U.S. that, that I'm aware of. The, these appear to be older vehicles. Um, it may not even be from this time then as well. There's, there's absolutely no context to these things that he's throwing up there. Oh, but they help the GDP, John. The GDP, they help it. GDP, John. On paper, yeah, sure. How much of that benefits us, though, Americans? Because it's us. Ah, uh, uh, bread crochets says that... Uh, he thinks welfare is looting. That's, that's probably true. That's probably true. And, and at the same time, I'm sure he has no problem with, with um, any sort of, of corporate looting. Uh, he's got no problem with, with it, capitalism itself, which, which is the transfer of, of um, the product of people's labor to the people that happen to own the means of production. So I'm sure he's got no problem with either of those things. But, but taking a little bit of money so you don't die while well, that's looting. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can't even tell if it's in the U.S. It has no context at all. It's just it's just meant to to fearmonger. Um, thank you, Katrina Kaju, or Kaiju. Um, Aliosha says I'm a neoconservative. I love America. If you don't agree with me, you don't love the U.S. Well, that, that's basically it. Either you agree with John, or you're wrong and and you're evil and 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 so on and so forth. That's his, that's his basic premise. That's what he's he's trying to get you to swallow. Okay. There are no white Americans. Well, that's, you know, if, if I, if I uh, interpret your point correctly, that, that's true. The white, there's no such thing as a, a white culture. Um, there are people who are, you know, the color of their skin is, is more white. But even that has, has fluctuated throughout time. There, it wasn't that long ago that Irish Americans were not considered white. Uh, same thing with with Italian Americans, with with Russian Americans. Uh, you can go on and on down the list, and and it really fluctuates who gets to be white. White is more of a concept. It's 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 a, it's an in group, out group sort of a marker. If you get to be in the white club, well then, whatever you say, that's that's truly American. That's truly patriotic, and uh, you know the way the world works. No one else does. And if you're not in the white club, then you don't. Um, you get disenfranchised, and, and rightfully so, because you're not a, you know, you know, whatever it is that they, they have come up with. Uh, oh, sarcasm intended. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I picked up on that, Alyosha. Thank you, though, very much. Um, so, yeah, whiteness is an interesting concept. There's, there's a really good uh, podcast series. Um, it's from Scene on Radio. 
Um, in fact, you know what? I'm gonna pull it up right now, just to, just so I don't forget. Um, it's called Seeing White, and it's it's how race was made in America. Uh, from the podcast, um, seen on radio. Uh, why, oh, 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 I'm terrible at typing when I'm not looking. All right, let's pull that up. Seeing White. This is an excellent podcast series. If you have any interest in, in finding out the, the history of how the, the concept of whiteness was constructed, because it, it, it is not as old as this country. It's not as old as the U.S. by any means. It was constructed for the purpose of, of dividing and, and, and uh, oppressing groups that could be then termed not white. So if you go to seenonradio.org and slash seeing white, you can, you can find that whole podcast series really excellent from start to finish it, it, I mean even if you think you, you even if you think you know a lot about uh, race theory and, and racial relations and stuff like that or even history I, I'm sure there's there's a bunch that you can learn I know that I learned quite a bit from this um, so especially the the, the episode oh, season two episode one turning the lens oh yeah I see I see so yeah the, the second episode in the series which was in season two I believe uh, how race was made. That's, that's in particular a really good one about how people just kind of created it out of whole cloth. There was never, people would identify as uh, their ancestral origin, whether, I mean, origin, loosely speaking, where, their, where their, their ancestors immigrated from last. So whether that was English, if they were in America, they would identify as English. You know, if they were German, same thing. Uh, and then this, this term whiteness came along and, and now you can be part of that club and you can have all these sorts of unearned privileges and more access to jobs and stuff like that. It's a really, really great series. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Italians and Irish and Russians are considered white now. <laughs> Progress. <laughs> yeah, with the, with the little... Um, with the little irony face at the end there. I, 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 I'm still getting used to all the, the, the Twitch um, emojis that are, are meaning of different things, but I know that one's, I at least know that one is for uh, irony. So I appreciate that. Yeah, progress. No, and, and the reason they keep putting people, they keep expanding the white club is, is almost always to, to split the working class amongst themselves. Um, so while it was advantageous for the Irish to fight against the, the poor black people for jobs in factories and stuff like that, they were not allowed into the white club. Once that stopped being advantageous and they could use uh, the, the, the Irish's growing political power to their own advantage, hey, you get to be part of the white club. And that, that's kind of how it went. Um, but yeah, let's get back to Doyle for a second here. Um, this video is taking forever, but uh, it's been an interesting ride so far to say the least. Estimated that immigration, both legal and illegal, increases the GDP in this country by like 11%, like 1.6 trillion. Cool, right? Guess how much of that increase goes directly to the immigrants themselves in the form of wages and benefits, wages and benefits that Americans aren't getting. Fully 97.8%. GD immigration and the American worker, no citation. Just, he could have made that in, in his word processing program. I'm guessing this is probably false or, or at least deceptive in some way, but uh, even if not, is it, is it bad that immigrants get more benefits from immigrating? I, I, they, they are then Americans, so that, is, that still is Americans getting the benefits. Very bizarre. And, and what are they, they're not just going to hoard that wealth, they're going to distribute it uh, amongst their communities as well. It's, it's not as though it just stays in that place. Um, unless you are very well connected as an immigrant and you get to have a very um, high up position in some corporation or something like that. Uh, then maybe you're hoarding a bunch of your wealth, but I, I seriously doubt that's the kind of person that he is talking about. GDP going up, it's supposed to benefit us, right? I mean, that's why you said it. No, total benefit is about two tenths of 1% of the GDP, about 35 billion. Oh, but John. So it sounds like there's a benefit. That kind of that kind of contradicts him saying there's no benefit. <laughs> See, again, he says one thing, he says the opposite as though they're both right. It's, it's a bizarre tactic, but apparently it must confuse his, his listeners or his viewers enough to keep them coming back. Very strange. Alyosha says, my mother passes for white. Her mother was almost 
African, and Indian color. Most Americans viewed her as black. That's the problem. Slight sarcasm. That's the thing. There's, there's, there's no clear boundaries of what even race is. Um, if you have a, a, a black father and a white mother, does that make you black or does that make you white? Or does it depend on what your skin color comes out as? These are just made up constructs used to divide people. They don't actually mean anything. Things like culture uh, have a lot more meaning. Even though these two are in, in many ways uh, constructs, there's no, there's, nothing, there's no inherent cultural values to humans, um, they still have more tangibility than, than race. Uh, you may have a cultural tradition of uh, eating on the floor uh, versus eating on the table, and that may mean different things in, in different parts of your life. You, you may come to uh, look back on that fondly or whatever, and it becomes part of your identity. Um, that's going to mean a lot more than, than what color your skin happens to be. Or at least it should. Um, yeah, let's see. Also, the title of an article study tells you nothing about the actual conclusion. That's also very true. Um, it's just like le reading the headline of, of any news article. You can't tell exactly what's being said. And in fact, the way that, that most articles are written, it's to be eye-catching. So it may even be clickbait. You know, it could be just trying to draw you in so they can sell you advertising and, and have nothing to do with what the, the title actually says. So it, it, it tells us no information. Uh, so is this a theory channel, a chud dunking channel or something in between? Well, right now it's it's a chud dunking channel. Um, uh, I, I do tend to alternate back and forth. Thank you very much for your question, by the way. Uh, floof fanatic. Uh, so uh, every Friday night I do a theory stream where I look at a, a or I listen to a um, chapter from an audiobook of a leftist uh, author. Right now we're going through The Conquest of Bread by Peter Kropotkin. And I tend to have a guest on who, who will help me kind of, you know, make the text make sense for, for a modern listener, kind of relate it to, to modern day issues and stuff like that, and, and pull the parts that are still relevant out uh, to be useful to the listening audience. So I do that every Friday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time to about 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. And then on Fridays, I just kind of do whatever. Um, sometimes I, I dunk on chuds. Sometimes I look at videos I actually care about. Uh, and, and add my own uh, commentary to it. Um, it I'm just kind of leaving it wide open at this point, what I do, and it, it'll depend too on, on what my audience feels like doing. Because, um, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's in the pursuit. Oh, thank you very much for the follow, Flu Fanatic. Um, so, so it's in pursuit of, of trying to make affiliate, finally. Um, I'm getting close. I definitely have enough subscribers. Just hit number 70. Thank you very much. Um, I have enough, I have almost, I, I am, if I keep up my streaming schedule, I'll have enough streaming hours and enough unique streaming days to make it. The only thing I'm missing is the consecutive, uh, viewers and commenters. So working on that, trying to get to that point where I can start actually, you know, making more of a business out of this and, uh, who knows, maybe eventually making it more of a full-time gig, which, which would be amazing for me. I, I really enjoy this sort of thing. I enjoy talking about whether it's chuds, whether it's, it's leftists I agree with, whether it's theory from 130 years ago, I, I like it all. And, and I like very much the communities that I've found in this space. Uh, let's see what uh, Katrina Kaiju says. I wonder if he gets Coke or Kato money. I wonder the same thing. You know, that would be really uh, an amazing thing if someone could, could dig into that and, and figure out where exactly he's getting his funding. Because there's I just don't see how it's possible. That, that looks like a nice microphone. I don't know everything about microphones, but it looks like it's a better mic than I'm using right now. All I have is a, a Yeti Black. Um, I wonder, because, yeah, like he just doesn't have enough subscribers to sustain, to sustain himself all through YouTube. As far as I know, he doesn't do any live streams either, so it's not like he's getting direct donations that way. So it's really bizarre. Um... Doyle is worse than Tucker Carlson? Uh, real sarcasm. Well, maybe in his ideology. They're very similar personalities. That's a, that's, that's a really good person to compare him to because just like Tucker, he'll walk right up to that line where he knows what the TOS is. He knows what's going to get him actually canceled. Um, and he won't quite say the thing, but he'll just strongly suggest it. And he'll do a lot of vague fear-mongering like, like he's doing right now, saying, immigrants are coming. Uh, 
it's meaningless, but it gets people scared. And it gets people thinking more towards, um, you know, what he wants, which is some sort of white identitarian ethno state, uh, also run by Christianity as well. Um, he's, and again, he's never said any of those words specifically, but, but if you listen to even a few of his videos, it's hard to get any other impression than that. Um, so yeah, so very similar to a Tucker Carlson sort of personality. Doesn't do the, <laughs> the confused face quite as often as Tucker, but uh, other than that, very, very, very similar. Have I read Joyful Militancy yet? I have not, but I, you know, I'm always looking for new books to read. I try to read a book a week, not always theory books, just in my own time. Um, but I, I try to keep up a book a week, so I will definitely check that out. Thank you so much, Bread Crochets, for that, uh, that uh, recommendation. Uh, looks like an RE20. Are you referring to his gun behind him? I'm, I'm, I don't know anything about guns, so... <laughs> It could be. It could be not. I, I have no idea. Um, at least Doyle's face isn't perpetually confused. Yeah, yeah, precisely. He has a range of facial expressions. It's not just the that, that Tucker does all the time. Uh, let's continue on, though. When GDP increases, prices decrease. And I know this because Henry Hazlitt told me so in 1946. OK, cool. Irrelevant. I'll tell you why right now. But first, just internalize that there is very little evidence uh, that indicates or suggests that immigration in any form is a substantial benefit to the He just said it's a benefit. He just said it contributes to GDP positively. He's, he's being very subtle, though. He says substantial benefit. So that, that's his little weasel word he gets to throw in there to say that, oh, other than the little boost in GDP, there's no substantial benefit. Um, it's, it's, it's in my mind very contradictory. Um, or at least very underhanded the way he's using his language. To the American people. But that aside, here's why economic arguments about immigration are irrelevant. Oh, see, 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 there you go. Economics are irrelevant to immigration because there's always, for him, there's always a deeper social and moral hazard to allowing certain things to happen. It's never about economics first. That always has to be subordinate to uh, white conservative Christianity and, 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 and patriarchal ordering of society 20 illegal immigrants will vote for democrats nine out of ten. there you go just by virtue of the fact that they tend to vote more for democrats that makes them an evil in his mind and legal immigrants will vote for democrats yep there you go this is a fact and wait did wait i think i kind of glossed over that did he say illegal immigrants are going to vote for democrats because that's just not a thing there's, there's no significant portion of illegal immigrants voting for anybody so but you, you really got to keep on your toes with John because he slips that bullshit in there. We'll have a problem when liberals move from California to Texas, but they keep voting for the same policies that ruined where they came from in the first place. Yeah, what do you think is going to happen here? Who would describe California as a ruined state or any sort of a failed state? They, they are, uh, the last time I checked, they were about the, the 15th most powerful, con or, uh, what do you call it, state for lack of a better term, in the world. If you, if you looked at, if you divided up all the U.S. states and put them on par with the rest of the world, they had like the 15th highest GDP of any political entity. And, and, and you know, it wasn't that long ago that I looked at that statistic, so I wouldn't be surprised if that has, or I, I would be surprised if that's changed all that much since then. By what measure are you calling it a, 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 a failed state or, or has failed policies? Because... Wait, because of the, maybe the wildfires that happened because uh, private corporations mismanaged their, their power grid and, and didn't make the necessary updates? Is that why it's failed? Um, so bizarre. And he'll never say it, though. That's the, the frustrating thing. He will never come out and say, well, you, you're just supposed to agree with him that, yes, California, obviously, failed policies, terrible state. That's why they're going to Texas. Oh, let's see. Uh, okay. Yeah, of course he thinks economics are irrelevant, says uh, Bread Crochets. He's trying to distract his audience from the problems of capitalism. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that can never be the problem because he, he wants to have state and um, political I and, and, and uh, private business and uh, as well as religious 
um, fundamentalism all just intertwined and melded together. That, that's his ideal form. Uh, have you been to an in and out, particularly a third in a third world country? <laughs> Very funny. Um, uh, so Manfred Max Links says, I am from Austria, so free healthcare. Love to have free healthcare. Um, that, that, is, that is one of my dreams in my lifetime, is to have some sort of single payer universal system. Um, of course, he's never going to even bring that up as an issue. He, he doesn't care. He, I mean, he literally doesn't care if poor people die. Uh, <laughs> Alyosha says, uh, isn't it bread theory, but isn't it true? No theory is perfect cure-all. This Doyle is not smart enough. Uh, Beck and O'Neill and other conservatives talk, uh, talkers will outpace him unless Doyle gets better. Uh, yep, that's, that's definitely true. Really true. Um, yeah, no theory is no theory is perfect, Carol. Absolutely true. Even if you're looking at leftist theories, always going to be different geographical, different cultural, political differences that that make one theory more viable than another. Or in practice, if if things have not been fleshed out and and, and tried before, you're going to find that you're going to run into all sorts of realities that you hadn't imagined. So yeah, well, theory is important in my opinion. Of course, name my channel after it. Uh, it's not the be all end all of anything for sure. It's just helpful. All right, let's continue on with this incoherent rant. Do you think that they're going to totally abandon their culture? Do you think that they're going to get a... What if they don't? What if they bring their culture with and the American culture as a whole, not that that's even any sort of singular entity, but what if American culture as a whole gets better because we have more ideas pouring in? We have new ways of thinking about things. Even just having different languages means that you have concepts that are not translatable but still potentially valuable to, to the bettering of your society. Um, he's, it's just be afraid of what's different. That's his entire message at this point. White picket fence and, and start reading Thomas Paine and John Stuart Mill in the Federalist Papers. Well, I'm if they go to college, yeah, probably they, they do read those sorts of books, but okay. I'm okay with immigrants as long as they assimilate. They're not assimilating. Just going to stay without any sort of evidence. Not that it even really matters how well they quote unquote assimilate like I think we can have a whole bunch of different cultures that, that, that get along I mean cities are a grand experiment in this sort of thing of, of all sorts of different people living side by side not all speaking the same language even and yet for the most part getting along and you know they'll always point to, to crime statistics when it comes to cities but statistically speaking uh, for one thing most of those crimes are committed by gangs and gangs are a product of capitalism, a product of systemic inequality. Uh, so if we fix those sorts of things, then even the, cr the, even the crime that they, they like to point to and, and whine about, which overall crime has been going down since the 70s, 80s, something like that. Um, but even then, we, we can fix those problems as well by, by having more equitable um, social programs and, 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 and political organizations. So... Yeah. They don't want to assimilate. Well, but my family immigrated and we're assimilated. That's great. I'm, I'm happy, you know, good. But we're not talking about you. We're talking about very strong tendencies, not exceptions. Again, th th this that doesn't make any difference to me whether or not a, a, a culture of in immigrants assimilates. I mean, I care about people uh, wanting the best for their children. Uh, I care about people wanting to get along as, as neighbors. I care about people uh, wanting to have a better life and wanting to have a better life for, for everyone, not just themselves, but, but everyone around them. Um, any culture could, could become a part of that, or that could fit into anyone's culture. That's not, that's not just a, a, a unique, discrete cultural value that, that, that you know, the quote-unquote Western cultures have. Everyone wants the best for their children. Everyone wants uh, to be successful, whatever that means to you personally in, in your life. Um, I don't see there's, there's any reason why we can't have differences, but also compatibility and, and interconnectedness with, with people that, that have different experiences and different lives and, and even different ideas than ourselves. Um, so this just 
this is not a, a, a salient point to me. It, it makes no difference to me if people are coming and assimilating or not. Um, that's it. As long as they can survive, as long as we're not trying to hold them back, I mean, that's much more important to me personally that, that we, are help, we are helping them attain the sort of life that they are wanting to get, you know, their entire reason for coming to the United States. Yeah, that, that, that's what's important to me. Three generations of immigrants later in this country, they're still not assimilated. They actually are even more in support of Democrats. And here's where it just totally flies off the rails. His evidence that they're not assimilated is they're voting for Democrats? How? That's such a non sequitur. That th there's no connection between point A and B of, of, of that line of thinking. Voting for Democrat, not being assimilated. What the hell? Uh, it, it defies all logic. There's, there's, there's no relationship to that at all. Um, what does being assimilated have to do with being a Democrat? And, and are Democrats not assimilated to America, too? The ones that have been here for generations? Um, it, it, it raises so many more questions than that answers. It's just, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Okay, let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, you were talking about Doyle and conservative talkers, their theories. Uh, be, worship of, uh, be worshipful of Trump. Flags, uniforms, etc. But not everyone is the same. Yeah, yeah, I got you better now, Alyosha. Uh, assimilation is perfectly cultural, is is practically cultural genocide. There's a there's a, a a decent point in that sort of an argument. Assimilation certainly can be, especially when it's forced assimilation. When we get to things like um, uh, the, the the schools that they would put Native Americans in, especially in Canada, uh, where they would be forced to not speak their language anymore. They'd be forced to to dress in in Western clothing, you know, quote unquote, Western clothing, these sorts of things that that can literally be a form of genocide for sure. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 just the natural process of, of assimilation can also be a wiping away of, of cultural heritage and, 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 and past richness and, and, uh, connection to, uh, places that your family has come from for sure. Uh, so all governments want is pay taxes and don't break laws. Okay. Um, mm -mm -mm. Let's see. They are voting for this group of neoliberals, not my group of neoliberals. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> as a leftist, I, I definitely can understand that point. Um, Democratic Party, by and large, is neoliberal, despite having a, a very small uh, so-called uh, social democratic wing. They, ha they, they, when it comes down to it, they wield very little power when it comes to voting and actually making laws. Um, they, are, they are controlled by Nancy Pelosi, who herself is, is, is pretty, pretty hands down a, a neoliberal. Thank you so much for the follow. Uh, uh, Jordan Peterson. <laughs> uh, that's a nice name. Uh, so welcome to, the, welcome to the stream. We're talking about John Doyle right now. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought there. But anyway, let's continue on. We're getting close to the end here, finally. They only assimilate to American culture to the degree that American culture promotes its own destruction, degeneracy, communism, hatred. Oh, he loves that word, degeneracy. And that's another fascistic uh, watchword. People start throwing around degeneracy, especially non-ironically. Like, I, I, I even cringe a little bit that the left has, has picked up that word, even ironically, because it's so closely tied to fascism and Nazism that it's just... It's just an icky word. I don't like it. Um, but he's, he's so happy to, to label anyone that is not exactly like him as a degenerate. Uh, anyone that thinks differently, that looks differently. Degeneracy, wherever he looks. Hatred of white people, etc. And that's the biggest thing. If a majority of these immigrants say they're against free speech, they're against gun rights, etc. In a vast... If a majority, are they saying that? Do you have statistics to back that up? Absolutely not. You do not vast majority of them are voting for Democrats who literally Democrats even rarely say Democrats may pander to to sorts of, of gun legislation but they rarely do anything about it um, so who cares from from his point of view who would, what would even matter if they were voting for Democrats they're not going to do anything substantial about gun laws literally want to erase our country how could you ever think that they're assimilating that's just that's irresponsible 
Democrats are trying to uproot the country, and they're only a few elections away from giving all of the... Yeah, I would agree with you. Uh, bread crochets, degenerate is, is made up eugenics word. Yeah, so I, I try to avoid that even in, in, in jest, even in... Uh, even using it ironically. I just think it's a gross word myself. These illegal aliens, the ability to vote, and then they're just gonna bring in more. Illegal aliens, the right to vote. Okay, so this is something that hasn't happened and, and no one is proposing it. I, I mean, personally, as a leftist, I think that anyone who is, who is, is staying in a place as long as, long enough to put down roots, so to speak, getting a job, um, sending their kids to school, all, all these sorts of things that, that, that permanency suggests I think any of those people should be able to vote because they are affected every day by laws that they have no say over. And, and to me, that's taxation without representation because they're still paying taxes. Uh, they still pay taxes every time they, they shop at a store. Um, they pay taxes if they, if they have a car, on and on and on. Um, and, and even just as, as just a moral thing, if you live under a state, uh, under its rule, you should have a say in it. That, that seems pretty basic to me. However, having said that, no Democrat is proposing anything like that. None of them want immigrants, or illegal immigrants, I should say, to vote. This is just complete nonsense, fear-mongering, and, I mean, it's not really even worth addressing more than that. He's just making this up to scare people. And then we will never win an election again. And even if you wanted to change these people's minds... Already, structurally, in many places, they would not be winning elections because their ideas are unpopular. They win with, with less than 50% of the vote, or at least fi less than 50% of, of the voting electorate, you know, the potential voters. But because they've structurally disenfranchised people, because they've done things like gerrymandering, and they rely on things like the Electoral College at the, at the federal level uh, for presidency, and as well as the Senate, which is itself a regressive body, an unrepresentational body, um, that's the only reason they, they maintain power at all. Their ideas are unpopular. And rather than changing them to popular, more popular ideas, or rebranding in a way that at least makes them seem more palatable, they choose to continue to oppress and, and disenfranchise and continue the same sorts of tricks. It's, it's disgusting. Minds, you don't have the institutional power to do that as quickly as would be necessary, even if it were possible. That's why we need an immigration moratorium. We need 10 years, net zero immigration. You want to bring... Uh, so Alyosha asks, does Doyle have a good interpretation of the Republican Party or is it slogans, buzzwords and agree or else? Yeah, I mean, you nailed it right there. That's that's exactly what he is. He doesn't. Politics for him is all about feeling. I feel that this is the way the world should be. And anyone that disagrees is a degenerate and should be locked up. Um, the 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 ends are, are, are always justified or always justify the means. However you get to his, his reality, he doesn't really care. He's not too picky about it. Um, he just knows what he wants. He wants people just like him to be on top um, and have all the doors flung open to them and slammed in the face of everyone who's not like him. Bring over your spouse or your kids. That's fine. Welcome, welcome. But net zero. Also cut welfare benefits from illegals. Let them repatriate. Illegals do not collect welfare benefits. So this is, again a non-issue. There's, there's no big problem with illegal, or I keep using his terms, undocumented immigrants. There's no problem with them collecting any sort of welfare benefits uh, about the only government benefit they could be afforded is if they have a serious medical issue, they would not be turned away by a hospital. And that's about it. They don't have any right of inheritance. They don't, they don't have any, I mean, you can't legally get a driver's license even uh, if you're a undocumented immigrant. Um, they're definitely not on, on, on any sort of so-called welfare program. There's almost zero fraud in any of those programs, even among um, naturalized and, and, and native citizens. So that's just ridiculous. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of immigrants who are right wing, who love America, and that's great. I love that. But unfortunately, as I'm sure they know, the vast majority are aiding in the destruction of America. How that destruction is being carried out, who's carrying it out, what they're doing, he's never going to say. But be scared of it. Look out. <laughs> In 10 years, if we get our country on the right track again, sure, we can reconfigure our policies. But right now, what we're doing is absolutely unsustainable. And the final point is this, to be... Un again, no evidence, not even 
pretense of evidence, just it's unsustainable. Unfailingly pro-immigration is necessarily to be unpatriotic. Because if you believe that America needs other people from other countries to teach America how to create art or music or food or enterprise or technology, you simply haven't been paying attention. Oh boy. Where do you think all of this art and, and music and entertainment and enterprise comes from? Unless you're talking about art, music, entertainment, and enterprise that came from literal Native American tribes uh, and individuals, you're talking about it coming from someone who was at one point an immigrant or their family was an immigrant. That's ridiculous. That's how we get new ideas. That's how we get new things. We have people come and bring their traditions with them and they, they, they add to the mix. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I don't even have words for it. <laughs> it's just not even worthy of entertaining this as an idea. Uh, let's see what we got. Mm -mm -mm. So Alyosha says uh, states have rules and laws. Also, federal can override those rules and laws uh, in all sectors. Absolutely. Yeah. So he's, he's acting as though someone is coming in and, and overrunning the government. And it's just not the case. Um, Bread Crochet says, I move, if I move to a country for better opportunities, I would know, I would want to destroy it. <laughs> exactly. Could, uh, just imagine, what, pick a country that, that you could, you know, see yourself living in if, if you are not from, or if you are from the U.S. right now, or if you're not from the U.S., just pick a different country that you can imagine moving to in your, in your lifetime. Um, would you want to go in and, and, and change every single thing about that country? Would you, would you learn them all with, with, with the, the, the real American or the real wherever country you happen to be from uh, thinks uh, and try to change everything to that? Probably not. More than likely, you're, gonna, you're going to uh, be assimilated to a certain degree yourself. You're probably going to learn a language if it's different from your own. Uh, if you have children, uh, they're probably going to grow up with, with the, the new country's language and, and customs and culture and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, so to a certain extent, that, that's, that's not really a problem. That's just part of the, the natural give and take of, of any culture, of any peoples, is, is that you're going to have blendings, especially when you come in proximity to other people who, who live around you. Uh, it's just naturally going to happen. Um, so yeah, subversion would, would not be most people's first impulse, no matter what country they move to. It would be learning the customs there, learning how to get along with your new neighbors, that sort of thing. Uh, Hollywood is run by the uh, indigenous, John, John Doyle says probably. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, he's already brought up Alex Jones in this particular video uh, as a good source of anything. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's latched on to all sorts of uh, conspiracies, including the, the JQ. He's just a, a really despicable man, which, again, is so unfortunate for someone so young. I mean... That what 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 really bothers me about him being so young, I think, is the idea that he'll be around doing this sort of thing for decades to come. And only he's somehow going to get even more bitter and and conservative and reactionary about it. That's a really scary prospect. Like, I mean, it's, it's bad enough that that someone like Tucker Carlson has his position at his age, but he's not going to be around forever. Just like Rush Limbaugh was not around forever. Um, he, he got his position, uh, I think, when he was in his middle age uh, part of his life, and, and that's when he had... But, but John Doyle, even though he's just on YouTube, even though he just has a few thousand subscribers, there's nothing that says that some event couldn't uh, tip him towards uh, a much larger viewership. And that's a really scary prospect to me, that he will be spouting this potentially to more people throughout many decades to come. It's, uh, yeah... What is my opinion on capitalism? I'm, I'm not for it. And before I give you my reason why, I always tell you that I define capitalism as the relationship of the owner to the worker. So uh, in, in difference to feudalism, where you have a lord and a serf, or slavery, where you have a master and a slave, uh, capitalism is, is more voluntary. It's, it's not entirely voluntary, of course, because you can only choose between so many different uh, owners. But it's, you have a contract with them you, to do a certain type of work. You, have no, you ha don't have to pledge fealty to them as you would as a, 
in a, a lord and serf situation. You are not bound to them for your entire life and potentially the life of your children, as would happen in a master and slave relationship. So capitalism is owner who owns the means of production. That is the, the way that, that uh, a good or a service is produced, um, who then takes some of, of the, the product of your effort as a worker for themselves or decides where it goes. They, they get to decide. It's basically a top-down pyramidal shape, a few people at the very top, most of the people at the very bottom. Um, and it, it, it just has to work that way. Um, what I would like to move to is, is beyond that, at least into a more socialist uh, configuration where you have, instead of worker-owner relationship, everyone in an organization becomes a, a equal uh, owner, so equal part owner. So each worker owner has an equal share to determine things such as compensation for each position, uh, workflow and scheduling, um, the, the major big picture ideas of how the company is run, as well as what to do with, with any sort of profit, how to invest for future ventures, all of that sort of thing is decided democratically. So we're getting rid of the, the, the we would be getting rid of, excuse me, the entirely with the exploiter exploited relationship that is common to all those other systems that I listed and moving beyond that. So, so that's my preference. That's already possible under capitalism um, to have a socialist uh, sort of enterprise. You can have a worker owned cooperative where everyone has equal voting rights. It's just a matter of getting a whole lot more of it until it's the dominant form and, and until the point where it can actually produce political change um, through its influence. Uh, and, and, and I like to, to say that, that while everyone may have an equal say, that does not mean that there is no hierarchy within a, a worker-owned cooperative. You're still going to have managers. You're still going to have uh, a division of labor. Um, it's just that those things are determined by everyone collectively, not just by one person. You're still going to have specialization. Um, so yeah, just an important distinction to, to make there. That it's, it's not talking about everyone literally being both the boss and the manager. Those are two different positions. Or, or uh, the boss, excuse me, the owner and the manager. Owner is a, a, a different class entirely. They own the company. They own the means of production. Boss just tells people what they need to do. They, they make sure that, that work is, is spread out evenly, you know, based on, on who does what, that sort of thing. So important distinction. But uh, anyway, let's continue on. What you are saying is that other people are better than Americans and we need them to come in and help improve us because we just aren't good or capable by ourselves. America is always replenished and rejuvenated by people coming in from the outside. That's the, that's the best part of our history. So yeah. Um, and so Alyosha says, and workers are lucky if they get in their hand 15% um, of, of their, their, their output, I'm assuming is what you mean. Uh, we need more co-ops, absolutely. And at, at, at the very least, more unions. I would agree with that as well. Um, CEO and boards of directors get too much, 90% uh, to 350% of compensation. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's absolutely true. Especially if you look at a, a newer startup like uh, Uber, where they, they, I think they still have yet to, to turn a profit. The only reason that they're still stable is because they get more money coming in the door than they do send out it, uh, send out the door. Um, but yeah, a lot of that money is just going right to the top. Um, so they're, they're literally making more money than they are actually producing in, in, in profits because they have no profits yet. So yeah, very true. Thank you. The fact is, is that we didn't build the most advanced and prosperous society by pouring in 2 million people a year from the... This is a, a 180 degree lie. Yes, that is it precisely how we built this, this civilization, was through the, 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 the blood, sweat, and tears of the, the millions of immigrants that came in every year. That's what made the Industrial Revolution pop off in America. Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. This is a blatant lie. It's just a lie. In the third world. We did it with our own people. America with our own people. Where did those people come from, John? They didn't all just originate here. They, they weren't even second or third generation here. The bulk of that labor force that built things like Washington, D.C., bulk of the labor force that built Washington, D.C., in fact, were slaves. Um, 
they certainly were immigrants, not by choice, but still immigrants. They were not our own people. They were brought in. The people that built the, 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 the huge buildings in New York City, immigrant labor, time and time again. And it's no different now. It, 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 immigrants still continue to fill a lot of the, the labor positions that literally build our cities, our civilization. Americans are smart. We can do the jobs. We can run our own country. We're still pioneers. And after we get things under control, after we start taking care of our own people, after we restore the American dream, which is dead, maybe. <laughs> I stopped the video every two seconds to talk for five minutes. I know it's, it's because he's putting so many lies per minute out there. And it's so hard to tackle each one without missing three more. If I just keep going, it's, it's incredibly infuriating. But I feel like I got to do my damnedest to keep up with it. Maybe we can start opening it back up to other people. Oh, well, but John, Steve Jobs was an immigrant. The guy who invented Google was an immigrant. Yeah, and now Google wants to kick you off the internet for having the wrong opinion, for being to the right of Hillary Clinton. So look where that got us. But seriously, those types of people are one in a billion. Specks of dust in a haystack. If you take a so thousand ridiculous. Americans and a thousand people representative of the current immigration proportions, lock each in a separate baseball stadium, tell them how to figure out, or uh, tell them to figure out how to get to Mars or to create Google. All right, so we've got a new person in the stream here. Hello to uh, Gillix83, uh, who says that I am absolutely not a lefty at all, but I like to watch lefty streamers to try and understand your minds. Well, I appreciate that. Um, the, that's always welcome here. Uh, I welcome anyone who's not trying to troll or to derail discussions, so you're, you're more than welcome to, to stick around. Uh, read the Communist Manifesto. I don't know who that's directed to. If that's me, I've actually done the Communist Manifesto in its entirety on stream. Uh, every Friday night, I do a theory stream, which is why I'm, I'm called Bread Theory. Uh, right now, we're going through the Conquest of Bread. We did the Communist Manifesto first. Now we're going through the Conquest of Bread. We do a chapter a week of the audiobook, and I usually have a guest. So I hope you tune in for that. Friday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Well, two, Americans win. We're still the best. Let's start acting like it again. And you may not like it, but this is nonetheless true. To take our country back, we need an immigration moratorium. Oh, but the economic benefit, which you just explained, wasn't even significant. Oh, you mean the economy? He didn't explain what significant means, so, so that's true. ...economy that's going to be destroyed when they inevitably vote Democrats into office and eventually solidify a one-party state, that economy... Democrats are neoliberals, too. They, they, they will do anything they can to, to short social programs in order to, quote-unquote, keep the economy running. So they, they, they're going to do the same basic policies as the Republicans. Economy. We can't assimilate millions of people from other countries each year if we can't. We did, and we have since our beginning. We can't even assimilate our own children. So that... What does that mean, assimilate our own children? You don't even... Well, okay, for one thing, you don't even have kids, so how would you know? But for another thing, what are you talking about? Uh, do you think children are all just rebelling in mass from their parents? They no longer have control over their own children? This is just bizarreness they grow up to not hate their country and right now we're struggling with that with even that but so assimilation is not hating your country okay got it well okay I th it's probably better than to not be assimilated and just swallow the the idea that your country is is great already and that anyone who says otherwise is wrong and evil uh i have trouble parsing the things that this chud says i do too i don't speak cringe yeah he speaks it fluently, though. It's, it's so incredible. Uh, CRT in schools, that is what he's talking about. An example. See, but people have control over their children's schooling. You can send your kid to uh, a parochial school. You can, send your kid, you can homeschool your kid. You, you have choices in, in schooling. So the idea that because Common Core curriculum is, is I, I think is what you, you said, CRT, but but I'm guessing you mean something like Common Core. Um, just because the standardized curriculum is, is, is pervasive in a lot of public schools doesn't mean there's not alternatives to it, if you so choose. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. You can even send them to a charter school that, that has a particular um, set of values. Uh, you have choices. I don't know. That's, that's just strange. But anyways, speaking of the children, we know that the backbone of society is the family unit. And so we need some strong... 
so the family unit that he's likely referencing is the nuclear family unit, which has only been a thing since the Industrial Revolution. Before that, people lived in extended family households. It was not uncommon for children to stay at home until they were married. It was not uncommon for um, people to maintain a home uh, multi-generationally uh, uh, until they, they passed away finally. So this idea that nuclear family is the backbone of society is... It's, it's proven to not be true for most of human history. That, that, that hasn't been the case. Go back to, to tribal times, which all of us came from at some point. Uh, it would not be the nuclear family unit. It would much more likely be some sort of arrangement where a group of, of people, perhaps the elders, perhaps it's just a, a group of, of, of mothers, perhaps it's fathers, many different arrangements, but collectively watch all the children in, the, in a particular village or, or, or you know, tribal arrangement. Um, people would be taught by all different sorts of people. The, these ideas of, of strict mother-father roles would not always be as, as strictly enforced. There's, there's a wide variety of other uh, ways that people have lived since most of the beginning of, or most of our existence. So the family unit, no, no, no. That, 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 that's not necessary. Uh, there's all sorts, of, it's, and, and again, that's not to say that that's wrong in any way. If that's what you want, you want to have the nice nuclear family, more power to you. I, I hope that we have programs to help support you, especially for things like maternity or paternity leave. I, I hope that there's pre-K uh, child care for you. So, so if you choose to then go back to work, you can. Um, but that's not the only valid system. And that's and you know any metric you want to look at: mental health, um, education attainment, uh, employment attainment. Uh, none of that is hindered by different family configurations. So, you're, you're, he's, he's just lying about that. Pro-family, pro-child policies. Our fertility rate is currently below replacement. We need to start having more kids. I personally think it would be kind of cool if we bred the left out of existence. And so... <laughs> what a ridiculous thing to say. <laughs> bred the left out of existence. Oh, says the man with no kids. Like... I hate to keep making it personal about him, but he keeps telling everyone else what they need to do when he won't even do it himself. Um, so yeah, so Brent Crochet says, you could, gasp, actually talk to your kids and be involved in their learning. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I do with my own children. I try to, to be as involved as I can. And you know, you got young kids that are in grade school. It's, it can be difficult, but um, I, try to, I read books with them. I try to make sure to watch educational TV with them. I do a number of things to, to try and be involved in their education, too. I talk to them. I try to help them think for themselves. I mean, more than any education, that, that's probably the number one thing that I think you can teach your child. I would say probably top two things would be um, to think for yourself, to, to, to have a love of learning. Um, I guess I get into more than top two things. Think for yourself, have a love of learning, and, and be curious and empathetic towards other people that are unlike you. Um, those are things that, that, that schools don't always do so well at. The schools are more focused on, on knowledge banking so that you can take a test, so that you can prove that your uh, particular teachers uh, for your school are doing their job right uh, so that you can continue to get funding. It's all about, I mean, it all comes down to the bottom line. Uh, it has nothing to do, or it has much less to do with them liking to learn, being lifelong learners, being curious about the world around them. It's just very, you know, quick and dirty. Get the knowledge in their head so that they don't make us look bad and we lose funding. It's not the, it's not the greatest system of education that I can conceive of. Um, but it, it's, it's what we got, you know. So, but I think we, at the same time, we could probably do a lot better to instill those sorts of things, that, that sense of wonder and, and uh, love of knowledge for... Um, for everyone and that would make school so much better for so many people uh i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you uh viewers right now had a had a bad experience at one time with school where you just didn't want to learn whatever you were learning and it, the teacher didn't help at all to make it any better what if we had a school where where we took different approaches based on different children's learning styles um what if we took more personal time with each child to to help them develop uh, a sense of wonder about learning, that sort of thing. Um, and a lot of it comes down to external issues as well. Uh, 
a lot of, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm digressing a little bit too much. Um, so schools should be neutral and have zero politics and teach. Well, I can, I can understand that sort of a position. Uh, I think in practice, that's impossible. That, that's just impossible. Um, you take a, a, a for, for a similar example, let's, let's look at NPR, uh, National Public Radio. I, I really believe they do their best to, to present things in a neutral way, in a non-biased way, um, to, to uh, cover whatever story that they, they have with, without giving you know, uncritical deference to, to one side or another. However, uh, there are some lines that they just will never cross. They will never question capitalism. They will never really dive all that deep into things like uh, systemic oppression. They may cover it very surface areas. They may have very simple solutions that they, they talk about people proposing. But there's certain political areas they will never get into. That itself is a political position. Um, never, never being able to even question capitalism. That's a political position. That, that says that, that capitalism is the, 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 the system that we should use. That it's right, it's inherently right and good, and it doesn't even need to be questioned at all, basically. Similarly, uh, with schools, you may want to ha do things very neutrally, but neutral in a school tends to be from a white middle class perspective. Um, you learn a lot of, of history of things that white people did. Uh, you learn a lot of manners that, that white middle class families want you to learn. Um, you learn to talk in a way that is very white and middle class. Uh, and, 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 and again, I would, I would imagine that schools try their, their hardest to remain neutral, but that there has to be a position. To have a position is to be political. There's just no getting around it. You have to be uh, espousing certain values in order to have any sort of a position. Um, and to teach kids anything, you have to have a position. So you have to have a position on history. You have to decide what history to teach. You have to decide uh, how to teach different things. Uh, what science to explore, all these sorts of things. Um, so well, it, it, I can understand wanting to be neutral. It's, it's an impossibility. It just is. <clears throat> so, and, and, that, and that's okay, uh, Gillix83. That, that, that's totally fine to disagree. Um, I, I hope that you stick around and, and uh, think more about these ideas. Um, this Doyle seems, uh, says Ali Osher, this Doyle seems immature, and if Doyle is convincing, <laughs> slash brainwashing, anyone, Doyle has a sponsor. I think that probably has to be it. I, I, like I, I keep saying, I don't see how he can fund all this stuff with only a few uh, tens of thousands of YouTube subscribers, that, especially when he went four or five months without having any videos out. Like, like where, did, where was he getting his money from? He couldn't possibly have saved up his subway tips that long. Um, so, he's, yeah, he's got to be getting money from somewhere. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised. A lot of these channels are on the conservative side are that way. Uh, you look at Classically Abby, uh, Ben Shapiro's sister. Tons of, of hate messages all the time. Um, gets ratioed constantly. Ha has the most vapid, like, like meaningless takes on, on so many things very little enthusiasm evident behind her channel uh and yet she does it a significant amount of her time like i i i don't think she even has a hundred thousand subscribers but um she has advertising up on all over youtube um that's not cheap that can cost millions especially given her reach um So yeah, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's completely astroturfed as well. All right, let's continue on. We're we almost do done. That, we need to make it easier for people to start families and to have lots of kids and provide for and protect those families. What are some ways we could do that? Ending no-fault divorce, rejecting any zoning laws that seek to end... Keeping people in marriages they don't want, that's a, that's a good solution to you. Um... How is that a solution at all? That, that, that just seems to make people more miserable. Yeah, I thought you wanted people to be happy. 
single family home neighborhoods, thereby protecting the suburbs. This will defend expanding the right to carry for all U.S. citizens, constitutional carry, very epic, banning abortions, ending common core, implementing pro family, pro America education, banning hormone treatment, puberty blockers, all of that stuff for minors, banning drag queen story hour in public libraries, increasing tax incentives to get married and have children, reaffirming that marriage can only be between a man and a woman, uh, and when we take power, and we will, cleansing the system of all of its when we take power and we will how 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 come that sounds so ominous to me taking power that's it's just why does that sound like taking over um <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah wasteful spending then we can redirect some of that money to things that are actually like cool like a national honor a medal for mothers and fathers who have stayed together and raised four or more children that'd be sick That'd be sick. Do that, and then, like, on the child's 18th birthday, we'll pay off your mortgage or something. Our country can't have a future if it doesn't have families. Who's going to carry the torch? More babies. Not tomorrow. There are tons of babies waiting to be adopted and, and older children waiting to be adopted right now. You know what those kids could be part of? A real family. You want to have more families? Make adoption easier. I mean... It all has to be one way with him. It all has to be through the, 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 the uh, mother, father, and then, the, and then they have a child together way. There's, how can that be possible and then also want to have the most families possible because families are the backbone? If you, if you narrow the gauge of what families can be so tightly that, that, that not everyone can have them and significant chunks wouldn't be able to, I mean, he would exclude all LGBT um, QIA members from having families. If you're taking them out of the, the equation, that could be 10 to 20% of the population. I, I haven't actually looked at those statistics lately. It might might be uh, polling at, at higher numbers. But like, you're taking the potential then away from one in five people having families. Um, you can't both want more families and only want a narrow band of people to have families and, and, and only accept a narrow configuration of what that family can look like. You, you gotta have one or the other, and he's he's gonna try and choose both, but that's it's an inconsistency. Not after breakfast. Now, I'm gonna get all the smartest people I know into an office. I'm gonna figure out how to make it easier for young Americans to get married married and have children. We're banning only fans, and it's not canceling student debt. It's not guaranteed housing. Duh. Relax, lib. My least favorite trend on the left is when they pretend to care about. Oh, I got some more comments in. Um, so Gillix eighty three says disagree schools do not teach how to talk white um i didn't I, I didn't mean to say that they they talk white they just talk in the way that a, a white middle class family would tend to talk um you use certain grammar certain diction that sort of thing that's taught to be the way that you're supposed to talk now you look at at the the various dialects um of lower class people white included there's all sorts of ways that people can talk and and speak forms of English that, that are perfectly understandable to one another. And what is, what is language if not a way of communication? So just because you may not see the value in a particular dialect doesn't mean it's not a valid dialect. I think that's an important thing to, to keep in mind. Um, and again, like you have to pick something. You have to pick some way for people to talk. You could, you could have uh, children uh, as though they were being educated for, for prep school to, to go to, to Ivy League schools. And you could have tons and tons of vocabulary thrown at them all the time. You could, you could uh, punish them if they don't use very big words and all this stuff, all this, this, this uh, language of, of manage, the management class of people. That could be another position, but that's still a position that's, that, that still carries with it political ramifications. Um, you, could have, you could say kids can uh, choose to speak whatever they, way they feel comfortable and, and just work on, on helping them convey their ideas uh, to... Um, as you could even say as, as broad an audience as possible that's still a position though that that that, that still has political ramifications you, 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 as, as much as people would like to you just can't get away from politics um every public policy that you make a decision on has political ramifications um and and i'm not speaking of political as necessarily favoring one party or another i'm just just saying political as in um it, it takes a political stance. It, it follows a political philosophy that, that certain things are valued and other things are not, basically. 
Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, tips from a subway job he must have had. He must have. He must live in a bourgeois neighborhood in, or the bougiest neighborhood in the country. Yeah, uh, he comes from Michigan. In fact, I think he's he's not too far from where uh, both both Hannah Reloaded, who I mentioned earlier, and actual Jake, who I mentioned, had debated him. I think he he used to live not too far from them, um, actually. So, I, I I mean I assume it was a pretty well-to-do neighborhood. But even still, how. How well could do? How well to do could that particular subway be? <laughs> You're only getting sandwiches. I know. I know you're joking, but that, 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 that's that's still funny. Um, Doyle wants to take power on the night of the rope. Yeah. Well, <laughs> again, he'll never mention anything close to that phrase, uh, but he'll drop every sort of hint around it to 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 show that he indicates that that's what he wants. Like when he talks about taking power. Yeah. Exactly. That's what he's that's what he's pointing at. Um. That's okay. I don't, I don't think that violates TOS just to, to mention that particular phrase. We're, we're just mentioning it as a phrase that exists. We're not directing it towards anybody. Um, Alyosha says, Doyle doesn't realize marriage is a combination of the couple's power and qualities. Because it is. Absolutely. And that should be any relationship that you're in. It should never be one person just dominating and, and, and subjugating the other person. That's, that's really sick. And, and that, that impoverishes whatever relationship you're talking about because you're only relying on the faculties of one person and the strengths and weaknesses. That, that makes the entire unit of that relationship rise or fall by the, the, the um, particular quirks of that, that particular person. Uh, that seems pretty dangerous to me. Uh, it seems to be a much healthier and, and, and better strategy to have people play off each other's strengths um, and weaknesses to, to support one another. Um, and that sort of thing. Be more equals. Um, yeah, let's continue on. Almost done. Family Almost family done. This has been my longest stream ever. You literally hide in your room during family gatherings, or you just don't even show up. You are not family-oriented. You are cringe. You are spiritually ill. But anyways, last one. This one is epic. We need a woke tax. I'm not even kidding. We'll come up with some, like, PR strategy, like, oh, the marketplace... New so we need the government to force conservatives to allow to be allowed to stay on whatever social pla uh, social media platform they're still on. But if any company, and he's going to say any company now, he says any corporation does stuff that that falls in line with with quote unquote woke politics, they should be taxed for it. I mean, this is an obvious contradiction if you're if you're even pretending to be neutral at all. But he's I mean, really, when it comes down to it. I don't think he is pretending to be neutral. He has his side. He wants his side to win at all costs, and he wants the other side to be oppressed at all costs. Doesn't matter about uh, morality, ethics, um, even right and wrong in, in very basic ways. He just wants them to be crushed. And if that means the government coming in and, and taxing anything he disagrees with, even if it has no bearing on his life, then so be it. Neutrality Act, whereas the consumer should be free to consume without political messaging, whatever. Something to appeal to the centrists, something to appeal to the people who... And see, and, and here's where the, the mask completely slips off, where he's like, oh, we're, we're just going to appeal to the centrists, we're going to pretend to be neutral, we're going to pretend to insert this in a way that, that, that doesn't favor one party or another, but obviously it's meant to favor his party, which is the, the, the Republicans. Um, and I'm, I'm sure he finds the Republicans themselves a little bit too liberal. In, in, in the main, I mean, he's even talked about that. Harken back to, to some far gone uh, Republican Party that was better. Never mentioned which one it was, but I guess he's, he's leaving his viewer to fill in the details uh, with whatever they felt so they can pretend to agree with him or assume they agree with him. Who still think that bipartisanship is an option at this point, but the end result will literally be a tax, a financial penalty whenever a big corporation, not a small business, a big corporation that primarily sells a product. What's a big corporation? What's a small business? He doesn't define these. Product or service that is not related to politics does something that either promotes a political message or agenda or discriminates against one. As, as I keep trying to harp on, there's no such thing as politically neutral. Everything you do has political ramifications. The way that you manufacture your Nike tennis shoes has political ramifications. It, it, it affects literally the lives of the people that manufacture them. Uh, and if you know anything about sweatshop labor, you, you know that the, there's huge effects on, on those people's lives, including uh, them ending their own lives because they, they are so 
downtrodden at, at, at the work that they're doing for Nike. That's just one small example. That has nothing to do with them making a political message, but it still has political ramifications. No such thing as politically neutral. It, it, it just cannot be a possibility. Um, even centrist is a political position. So for him to say that they're, they're doing something political that has nothing to do with politics, like how do you even determine what enterprises have and do not have to do with politics? Does that mean that if you are a flag manufacturer, you can manufacture any flag you like, no matter what political message it has. But if you are a t-shirt manufacturer, what then are you, are you able to put political messages on? I mean, people wear political t-shirts. Um, and does it cut both ways? Is, is I mean, obviously not in his world. Obviously it's only going to be towards, uh, leftist political messaging. He doesn't care one whit. I mean, he, the, he, he's such a hypocrite that, that in his opening and, and mid roll, uh, ad reels he's making political statements as he's selling things like uh gun target practice stuff and 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 uh i don't even remember what the other one was his magic his, his magic bullet gun target practice thing he's making political statements it wouldn't even stand up to his own criticism or his, his own standards uh if not for protecting the right and 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 blasting the left coca-cola teaches people to be less white pay up jackass companies move out of Georgia because they're restricting illegal voting measures and restricting abortions, pay up, something of that nature. Well, but John, who gets to decide that? Literally. <laughs> Very good point, Alyosha. They, they, they talk about all this virtue signaling and, and wokeness and stuff like that. At the same time, they literally berate and sometimes assault people that don't stand for the national anthem and put their heart, uh, their hand over their heart. Um, or, or get up in arms if people don't recite the Pledge of Allegiance or... or get so upset if if someone who is is accosted who's wearing a, a, a maga hat yeah it, it's, it's only for their own side that they care about because uh, for them i'm sure their position is the the default and everything else is political i mean that's one way to to pretend that you're neutral um you just pretend that whatever you believe is is the default position and you never really examine it that closely and you assume that anything that deviates from it is uh political me and you and all of our friends like we're going to take power and we get to call the shots and frankly we're being generous but seriously and this is when he comes up to the the edge of the line again we're being generous and the way he says that leads me to believe that what he's hinting at is that you all should be so lucky that when we take power we don't just slaughter you in mass i know it was just one tiny little turn of phrase but it's the way he says it and 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 the the context around it that to me says he would like nothing more than to just slaughter his enemies in mass, but he's going to be uh, tolerant and, and allow us to still live as long as we don't espouse any of our political beliefs ever again or ever try to take power. As long as his side can always have power and always have influence in, in society in any way that he sees fit, then it's fine for him. Woke taxes are necessary to take the culture back because the reality is that a large part of American culture is rooted in consumerism. And that, that doesn't necessarily mean that consumerism drives American culture. Um, sure, people get really attached to specific brands. Um, they may like it if, if a company does, you know, like a Cheerios commercial where there, there's, there's two moms or, or two dads or something like that, or an inter, even an interracial couple, which apparently was scandalous to some people not that many years ago. Um, they may like that sort of thing, but that's not going to drive the politics. They're, no one, no one buys a bowl of Cheerios, and and sees like a rainbow-colored Cheerio on the on the box front, and, and says, "Well, hey, maybe I'm going to support Pride." Now, maybe maybe gay, maybe being gay is okay. Uh, that just doesn't happen. It's 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 the inverse. He's got it completely backwards. All these companies are doing is saying, "This is in the cultural zeitgeist. This is what people care about right now." We're going to pretend like we do. We're going to pander to them so that we can sell them more stuff. That's it. That's it. Um, and it can be seen in, in, for instance, the makeup of, of boardrooms, um, which you look at the Fortune 500 companies, uh, overwhelmingly male, white, heterosexual, uh, Christian, all the stuff that, that John likes. Um, you would think if these, these companies actually cared about the positions that they're, they're pandering towards, they would do something about that. They, they, would, they would have programs to 
help train people that, that have had disadvantages in their life through no fault of their own, through poor schooling or, or just a lack of opportunity or whatever it may be. Uh, but instead they do the opposite. They just hold on to power and hold on to the money and it's, you know, it's all good for them. As long as they can convince the public that they care about this stuff, then they'll just keep doing it. Um, but to say that that somehow drives the culture, I, it might it might do a little bit to normalize it, but it's not the heavy lifting of cultural change, not by a long shot. That needs to be at the very least neutral so as to not reinforce the leftist narratives that are being propagated by every other aspect of the culture. And with all these policies, they're not set in stone. Most of them don't even exist yet, but the purpose is to get the ball rolling. Uh, so you say, Ali Osher says, if, if Republicans, want, Republicans want to win cancel culture, they have to be 68% better than libs. Is that too hard? <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I'm not quite sure uh, what... what angle you're coming at that from uh do you mean like they, they need, just need to cancel more people than than the liberals do or or they just need to have better ideas and i don't i don't know anyway moving on here get the gears turning there are very smart capable people working in right-wing politics or looking to get involved in right-wing politics many of them are watching these videos and i trust them to do the right thing when the time comes but anyways i said i'd explain the absence. do the right thing when, when the time years. comes I'll what does that mean that the time what does that mean? Do the right thing when the time comes. That that again, he's hinting at that. He's he's hinting at at at, at just wiping out enemies. And again, it's been bugging me this whole time. I feel like this video is slightly out of focus because I see it. it <clears throat> for all this setup that he's done, all the money he's poured into his his precious little set. How come his heck off commie sign is slightly out of focus? How come his t-shirt slightly out of focus? How come his stickers on his, his, the back of his uh, computer, though, are in focus? How come his the future is male is in focus? All the stuff right in the absolute foreground is in focus. It's not just the, the settings that I have it set it at, I think I have it set at uh, 70, 720p, so that should be good. It's just one of those things that bugs me. It has nothing to do with what he's saying, but it's just, I found that funny. Ah, so, so Ali Osher says, uh, much better ideas and actions. Yeah, yeah. You'd think it'd be easier just to get better ideas. Uh, not 250 interviews a week. It's easier to interview. Sure. Yeah, you think that, that rather than trying to push everyone towards your failing ideas, it'd be easier just to, to adopt better ideas or, or repackage them in a way that's more appealing. But apparently that, that's too much of an ask. I was well spent. We are very well equipped to keep moving and growing in the future. We have big plans. I thank you all for your patience. I was actually, I was running PSYOPs in the Discord, which is back. Shh. It's super secret. The left can't shut it down this time, though. But you can try. Humor my boys. They're, they're Marines, the ones running it. But yeah, I was intentionally spreading. There, there's no point in going on his Discord. Absolutely no point. No one's going to see it that's ever going to change their mind. This, these, these are his, I'm sure, his, his most hardcore uh, followers. So, yeah, I'd recommend not even bothering with that. He can certainly roast him in his own comments, though, on YouTube. <laughs> Poor. Misinformation in the community, like, face it, boys. John's not, John's not coming back. He, he, you really think it was a coincidence that the last video was how to remain optimistic? Like, you know, I was bored. We do a little psyoping. It's called We Do a Little Psyoping. But everyone had faith. They tr sure you did, John. You weren't just screwing around for the last four months or five months or whatever it's been. I'm sure you have big, big boy stuff to do in the meantime. Trusted the process. They were like, nah, he wouldn't leave us like that. And it's so true. It is so true. So thank you all for your patience. The content kitchen is now officially up and running. And he calls it the content kitchen. You, you'd think with his, his, you know, bizarro trad values that that kitchen would be something for women. But just one more contradiction in his, his anti, anti woman uh, sort of rhetoric running let's go hey guys if you like yeah, man, we're not gonna do any more promoting for him we're in fact gonna, we're gonna go away from that let's see what we got there yeah we'll just switch you over to that oh boy that was a long slog i gotta say thank you all those who uh those who went um went along on that ride with me i i i mean i didn't even intend to stream for for half this time but that's just how long it took so 
anyway thanks thanks you all thank especially thank you to uh, thanks to those of you who are new to the channel or new to the stream um i also have let me pull that up right quick we'll go back to that mode and if you want to follow me in all the different places the best way to do that is to go to l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash bread underscore theory there you can find links to my twitch my youtube my podcast I put this stream out both on YouTube and as a podcast. So if you if you miss any episodes, you can always find them there. Um, as well as my Twitter, Instagram, you can buy my uh, photography, help support me uh, while I while I reach towards affiliate. Um, as well as I run a couple groups on Facebook, uh, Left Pod Posting, which talks about leftist uh, um, political uh, podcasts all the time, and uh, Left Signal Boost, which is just more of a generalist um, any sort of leftist media promotion including if you're a content creator in any of those fields, always happy to have more people posting there and getting discussion going. Um, so yeah, follow me there, go to my link tree and you can see more of my stuff. Again, I stream, I usually don't stream until about seven o'clock on Sundays. I may change that now that I actually have my Sundays back. I used to work Sundays. Um, may do more of a midday thing from now on. It seemed to work out pretty well. So maybe getting a lot more uh, people coming into the comments. I think this is most people I've ever had in, uh, in stream ever. I, I, I'm almost positive of that. So I really thank you all for that. Um, and then I do a theory stream. We're doing The Conquest of Bread once again uh, by Peter Kropotkin. And we'll be picking that back up this Friday night. I'm not sure who my guest will be then, uh, but I, I tend to have a guest. Um, last week was my, my brother Devin. And before that was Sean Scholes of the Tribunus Plebis podcast. So um, we'll see who I can uh, who I can get to agree to uh, this week's um, chapter. But I do about a chapter a week of a, a leftist theory audiobook, and and as I said, it was going to be it's going to be uh, chapter 14 of the Conquest of Bread. So if you want to read up ahead of time, uh, by all means, and that'll be at seven o'clock on this upcoming Friday uh, at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So look for me there. Um, and that's about all I think I'm going to have <laughs> the energy for tonight. This has been a marathon stream, as I said. So I thank you all for your comments. They, they really helped enliven the discussion. Uh, so I appreciate you all very much. Um, and until next time, Lectam. I